lastly we are crowdfunding this as well there is a prize pool but you can help increase that prize pool exclamation point crowdfunding in the chat you obviously need to log in to donate but once you have done that you can make this prize pool much bigger for these teams they've been putting on some phenomenal performances and every subscription to the method channel whilst this event is live will contribute two dollars fifty to the prize pool get access to an ad free viewing experience unlock sub -mokes, and generate channel points at an increased rate which you can redeem to interact with things live on stream all while supporting your favorite teams and speaking of favorite teams eddie it's e heroes and speedrun this is going to be good yeah this is we couldn't ask for for a better final if you ask me these are the two closest teams throughout the tournament both have been showcasing great play even speedrun being the only team taking a map off e heroes so my prediction for this final is intense gameplay sweaty boys behind their computers but I have a feeling that Eros is going to clutch it 3 to 1. 3 to 1 here. So, best of finals, uh, best of finals, grand finals, best of five. I want to know in chat one, if you think E Heroes is taking this best of five, two, if you think Speedrun is taking this best of five. But, Galu, who do you think is taking this best of five? Uh, I'd give it to E Heroes as well, since they won their last series. However, I think they might lose the first game because they have waited a while to play again they might be a bit cold coming into this series whereas speedrun literally just played so that that can factor in a lot in the first map very very true and also it depends on what map we do get and to find out what map we get we do head to the sp uh, into the wheel to spin map roulette are we going to land on something like battlefield Gunaeus and take it out early are we going to land on something unexpected like warsong gulch are we going to end up getting silver shard mines who knows there's only one way to find out and that is by spinning the wheel so for the final time this evening let's give it a spin and find out exactly where these two teams are going to be doing battle for the first time in the grand final this map could be look gelu also has their own spin there they got to make sure their own spin where's it going to land it looks as though we are going quite fittingly to be going back to the og for the first game in the grand finals war song gulch gelu how do you feel about that between these two teams ah this is this is going to be good i, I quite like Warson gulch i feel like the rogue play from both of these teams is really, really high. And the rift, the boost isn't too bad on Wars and Gold compared to some other maps, so it should be quite fun to watch. See. Yeah, 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 I agree. The rifts, oh, sorry, Kex, the rifts are, are equal here. Both Horde and Alliance can, can port them out of the flag room from the roof down outside towards the graveyard. So a, a, a more equal map, at least defensive wise. Yes, very, very true. I was going to say, you mentioned previously, you know, Grand Finals. We've got a bunch of sweaty people behind their computers here. Warsung Gulch, uh, there's not much in the way of sweaty tactics from these. We both know pretty much what these teams are going to be pulling out here. Uh, we saw Speedrun, actually, the, previous, the last map that we saw was obviously at the end of the lower bracket final, where they were going up against German Academy. And German Academy are known for their flag maps. We know how good they are on those flag maps. Twin Peaks, however, speedrun looked really comfortable there. I'm not sure whether they did something specific that, that threw German Academy off, but at no point throughout Twin Peaks, uh, Eddie, did I feel as though speedrun were under any pressure. No, I, I don't think they were under any pressure at all. Maybe except that one time where I love my dog died and Sublex managed to pick up the flag and, and stabilizing their defense. But also big, big credit to, to Dean for that performance. And honestly, if Speedrun manages to put a victory here, my MVP will most likely go to Dean. I think he has been performing super well. He knows his class and, and, and now he's going up against Warwick, right? There's no other Warlock that you can compare when you want to judge who's the best. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing that we also saw that happened in Twin Peaks, Galu, was Demidar on that DK doing absolutely incredible work making sure that everybody was slowed warsong gulch not quite as big but still important the control that you have over your opponent just how big is that going to be going into this first map here uh, i mean if you can split up the team with the chains and allow your tank to be free then it's super good but it depends if he's going to be offense or defense We've seen DKs play both scenarios at the moment. I, I personally prefer the DK on offense so the tank cannot get away, but I've also seen some on D just so their tank, well, so the tank can get away. 
So it, it depends if you want to be the, the aggressor or the defensive team. That's true. That's true. And I mean, as we head into, uh, you know, as we head into the map here, obviously we're getting the both of the teams set up. Before we go in, um, we're looking at the map roulette. We're looking at all the maps that we have available to us. Just quickly before we go in, Eddie, what is your favorite battleground in WoW? My favorite battleground? I mean, I'm going to speak from my heart. I am a one-trick DH tank, or at least I was a one-trick DH tank. I was known on Warzone Gulch. Warzone Gulch is my favorite map. It's a map where kiting is so essential, and the tank has such a crucial role. And it's also a map where, you know, compared to Twin Peaks, Twin Peaks, they don't have a lot of indoor areas. That means you can mount up a lot on Twin Peaks. It's a very open map. But Warzone Gulch, you have the tunnel, you have the roof, right? So. I, I, I love Warsong, so I mean, I'm I'm excited. And Gelly, same question to you. What is your favorite battleground in WoW currently? Well, currently, I would say Warsong Gulch as well. I mean, I have, I used to play level 19 a lot, so I just do Warsong Gulch every day uh, <laughs> years ago. But I always, honestly, I, I prefer Warsong Gulch in classic where you have the, the jumps and stuff, you know, jumping in the yeah. walls so you can climb. But that's That's kind of gone a bit now. <laughs> very very different and chat i want to know what is your favorite battleground of all time in world of warcraft let us know but chat have also let us know who they think is going to win this grand finals best of five and honestly it's a relatively close vote here e heroes 53.8 percent speed run at 46.2 percent so chat looking relatively split giving e heroes the slight advantage here and i think this is kind of what we've all agreed here eddie you said it's going to be 3-1 yep. gelu do you feel as though 3-1 is going to happen? You said that he, you think that Speedrun may take the first map here, but is is it going yeah, to be a 3-1 so. or a 3-2? Um, I think I think 3-2. Yeah. Okay, you're going for a 5, you're going for a 5 map final. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. I honestly taking a look at what we've seen, um I'm going to I'm going to go out and say it's going to be 3-1, but it'll be 3-1 Speedrun. Ooh. I feel as though I feel as though speedrun after you know they faced off against the heroes they took eye of the storm off them they faced off against German Academy and beat German Academy at their own game on a flag map they've got confidence going in as good as he e heroes are speedrun they've had their number a couple of times it didn't quite work out for them in the upper bracket semi-final but this one I'm back in speedrun and I can definitely see why you're going with speedrun because their performance has been great and they have only evolved throughout the tournament. So, I mean, it, 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 I mean I'm excited to see what Eros is going to do, um, especially after the first map and, and whoever takes the loss. I think the, the first map here is going to be quite important because we know that the loser has to pick, right? And But yeah, I mean, speedrun, I, I, I hope, I hope, they do damage because uh, E-Heroes, they, they deserve a knocking every now and then. <laughs> I mean, it's it's fair enough. It's fair enough. So it looks as though we've got 2-1 uh, to E-Heroes here on the desk, setting up Warsong Gulch for this first match of the grand finals between E-Heroes and Speedrun. And I'm excited to see exactly how this plays out. I mean, we saw previously Speedrun doing a great job in effectively pushing German Academy really hard on Twin Peaks. Do you think, Gelly, we'll see something similar here? Are they going to go for that hard offensive push, put the pressure on the opposition flag carrier, make them have to react to it? Or do you feel as though Warsong Gulch, smaller map, it's much more difficult to do that? Um, the speedruns seem to want to play. They seem to play very aggressive a lot of the time. I think these players, uh, they seem to play with a lot of uh, confidence so I feel like they want to always be the aggressors, whatever they do. And so do E-Heroes as well, really. It's going to be two very aggro teams. Yeah. Which is what you want to see. I mean, obviously, it's a good defense is always appreciated, but you want to see teams just fighting tooth and nail. And I imagine that's what we're going to see here. It's not going to be your usual battleground. They're not just going to go and fight mid, or maybe they will who knows uh it, it's entirely it all depends what we're going to see on this grand final it once again grand finals they tend to potentially throw up some surprises maybe speedrun has something up their sleeves maybe e-heroes have something up their sleeves you mentioned eddie warson gulch you've mentioned that you were a demon hunter tank before and and how important the role of a tank is yeah. out of e-heroes and speedrun who do you feel has the stronger tank here for the flag carrier 
That's a, that's actually a very good question. Keely has been gaining a lot of traction recent, recently with his tank performance, but I would actually argue that I Love My Dog maybe has a, a bit higher skill cap when it comes to that. I think Keely, Keely and that's important, Keely's strength is his leadership and his calmness and his overview. It's not always about your fingers. It's also about your brain. And brain is what Keely has. But I love my dog. He has proven that he has the fingers. So I would say mechanically, he's better. But as a team, I'm sure Keely can lead them to victory. Is that what you're casting now? You just don't have either. <laughs> no, yeah, that's why I'm a caster. It's true. I play with my toes and reroll through it because I'm so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Someone please quote that. I, I play with my toes and I've rolled druid because I'm bad. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to hear for it tomorrow. Thank you, Kex. <laughs> no Regardless, worries, look no at worries. this. But look at this beautiful view. We have never seen this before, have we? I don't believe I so. so. What, what a beautiful map, eh? Hey. Really, Yalu? Really? You're going to throw this at me? You're gonna throw this at me? Classic really? Wow, just the best expansion, isn't it? Even though that this map was redone, so this is the revamp version yeah, of it. Yeah, so right, it's not well. classic Wow. Yeah, yeah. Alright, <laughs> You like the, the revamp map? <laughs> I, I, I like it, but yeah, here we are, the calm before the storm of the grand final. It is map one in a best of five between speedrun and e heroes. Chat, I want to see you getting hyped for this because this is what we have been waiting for. I love my dog. We've got Killy, both of these fantastic flag carriers. Who's going to come out on top? Only time is going to tell. Eddie, talk us through the first opening moments of this map. Yeah, and as we see right now, Revsi is going to pick the Zerg late. They are probably just going to go and take a, a traditional team fight. We see Smokey here as well. Smokey has not chosen to follow his tank. I love my dog going alone into the base, which is fine, right? There's no Demon Hunter, so he has a free pass. Keely here, though. Keely is waiting back. I love my dog has already crossed. And, and with the movement of Keely here, we see customer support already going back and, and waiting in his base. And if he the sees... Oh, I'm sorry. If Ref saw him there, that, that would have been spelled disaster for e -Heroes. Luckily, Killy manages to escape the, the claw of the cat. But Customer is waiting, and I love my dog. He's in a free pass. But where's Ress, though? Where's Ress? I'm wondering, is Ress also waiting? No, he's not. Raz is like, a, he's around the tunnel somewhere. I, I like that both rogues have opted into Aster. After that last game, It's it just seems so punishing for Guardian mm -hmm. Druid tanks in general. They're just, the healing reduction is huge. The Vendetta just seems to slay them instantly. Raz just waiting here in the back, waiting for the tank to take the flag just so he can't just escape in the midfield. He, he knows his job. He's not opening up he knows the team fight is kind of safe so he's just kind of chilling for now and i love my dog actually goes for the flag pickup so raz instantly moves towards where he's going he mm -hmm. sees the call his graveyard and just moves accordingly but uh, yeah and i actually agree with that you had a great point about both teams opting into as a rogue and it just tells the story of how unevolved RPG in essence is even in the finals adaptation is coming right nothing is set in stone and that's just why I love this bracket there's so much unexplored potential and I love my dog here is about he's to cross out of form. yeah he's son out of form he did manage to pop the trinket here though and he has his soul shape going as well but great great clone from boom team here stopping him but the Incarn is still not used though so he he should be fine I mean, no trinket though. That's pr that's pretty huge for the next advance they get. If they can just that vendetta that we've seen has been so so dangerous. I I mean, he could, yeah, he's at the incarn already. It's a pretty bad spot to be honest. If they get any close, Killy Bear with the flag now though, running straight into I love my dog and the rest of his team, just running right down the tunnel to where the rest of his healers is. Shouldn't be an okay run through here. Cosmo saw right in the background on him but i think he should be okay customer support doesn't really look like he has enough damage to kill him outright on his own although that vendetta is available isn't gonna want to pop it when he has no support but rebzy creeping up in the background trying to stop maggie from connecting to him perhaps he just dashes to his flag room of the opposition maybe we're getting ready for a repick 
I was just thinking that. I was just thinking that. He's he's picked that up. He's going for the Berserker, but he's coming. What is he really going to achieve with that? I mean, maybe he can slow them down. I love my dog taking a bunch of pressure. I thought he was going for the repick. Oh, Killy's dying. Getting set up for that, but Killy is down. Killy is down. This does give wow. the opportunity for I love my dog to go through. Absolutely blown up by Revs. That Berserking actually paid off. I said, what is it going to do? It looks as wow. though it's going to kill the enemy flag carrier. Speedrun 1-0 up so far in this Warsong Gulch here early an early flag capture there and really impressive once again from speedrun here on a flag map yeah, that just the vendetta berserking convoke coming out there and it's so few stacks it's just so much damage he just dies instantaneously no sack available from dr muhammad so it's just Mackie there to heal him and it looks like he died even before he could even get a cocoon off if it was even available yeah, I think they caught Kili in the tunnel while Mackie was about to enter, and that also means when he then presses Convoke, there's only one target every spell can go into, and that is the, the big tanky bear. Kili did die with his Baskin, though maybe he could have pressed it, but honestly, I don't even think Baskin would have changed anything, judging from the power of those star searches from the Convoke. And, and we see Refshi now. Refshi pushing out with the flag. He's gonna try meet up with I Love My Dog and get the trade, but Refsy taking a lot of damage, and it seems like he has a hard time pushing forward here. Now, great, ah, oh, great, great Boomkin jump into the flap, and now he's gone. I mean, Refsy playing honestly perfect as of now. He's convoking the tunnel. Was It's just as you want, going ahead of Kili, waiting for AV cooldown to be off. In this case, it was the Incarn, and then Smoke there to, to support. But Kili, Kili got through, and, uh, and, and now they need to get the trade here, speedrun. They haven't swap the flag yet and as i say that i love my dog manages to pick it up from fc yeah raz there trying to look for the pick in between he was standing on top of it but dean with an excellent port making sure that no one can run in there and click the flag in between while uh his boys get it swapped onto the guardian druid and now revs going on to willex lock the lock goes down and there is a lot of members of speed run pushing aggressively. He's looking for the Berserker once again. If he gets this Berserker, you see how much damage he does. Probably has Incarnation available very soon. He's just waiting for that cooldown to come up. Very When it does, I assume he'll just go full offense with the Berserk, and it's going to be a lot of danger for Killy. Yeah, lots and lots of danger that, you know, I mean, it's one of those situations where Speedrun have taken that one, that, that single map there, and this will now make E-Heroes start to question, okay, we need to be very, very aware of what they can do. We've seen exactly how powerful they were against German Academy on, on Twin Peaks. Now we've got them on Warsong Gulch. We know what they are, you know, you know what their ability to do. Mackie dying on the side of E-Heroes here. Harley under a bunch of pressure as well. Revzy just putting, once again, just putting the pressure on. And one thing I like about Speedrun here is that it's not a case they are not waiting for the flag carriers to move around they are basically saying no we are going to continue to put pressure on your flag carriers we are going to do everything we can to ruin your flag carriers day demidar there taking a bunch of damage here comes customer support and demidar both of them trying to get onto killy once again just putting that pressure on while edk is down on the side of e heroes as well and here comes the pressure on to killy cocoon used and they do just take a look at killy killy doesn't have uh it doesn't have any sort of real big cooldowns he's there we go just using one there but once again the pressure telling look at look at killy's health bar compared to the i love my dogs i love my dog is just sat there there's nothing happening to him whereas killy bear is just getting absolutely pounded by speed run the yeah, power it was of weird that he chose the Convoke here. The Revs went, actually went in for the Cat Form Convoke with the Berserk. Yeah. It didn't really do too much. Yeah. Yeah, that but, was uh, kind of weird. Yeah, and uh, I th do you think it was a mistake, Gallo? He had the Circles. I, I hope so. <laughs> it was a bit awkward. But it doesn't seem to matter because Killy is just getting absolutely slaughtered at the moment by Speedrun. He wild charges up. He gets Typhoon back down. Kidney shot onto him. The healing coming out, but it doesn't look like it can really do that much. Custom support with that huge MS effect onto him. 40% reduced healing and Killy goes down, but it's picked up by Willix. Can Willix escape? He does a great port away, running as fast as he can. He's taking out Revzy with Blizzo, and oh. I'm not, I, maybe he's okay here. I, I think that yeah, Killy yeah. should be able to res, just leap up and swap the flag again. I think yeah. you're right about that, and there Keely comes, taking the flag, and whew, 
that was nearly a disaster for, for E-Heroes here. Speedcap or Speedrun was already ready on the flex spot, but look at Kelly now. He's gonna run straight into customer support. I, su I suspect customer is not gonna open solo, but you never know about these rogues. They have a lot of ego in the end, right? They wanna do the damage themselves, but I mean, I hope we can see some great kiting now from Kili and, and Mackie and Blizzard here. Look, they're stacking onto Kili. As soon as they're opening on Kili, I'm sure they're gonna run towards tunnel, put the ring out there, and then kite towards the roof. Yeah, this is one of the danger about going heavy on the offense. Yes, they were able to get Killy down, but pretty much their entire offensive team was wiped shortly afterwards, and they had no response to Azik picking that up. But as I say that, Killy just get torn apart by customer support there, and we do have another cap from Speedrun. Customer support just came in and absolute customer support now has a bear rug in their front room because Killy was just turned into one. And that gives Speedrun the 2-0 lead, game one, here in the first map of this grand final. Yeah, oh. I mean, this is just not looking great for E here is at the moment. Two flags down. I mean, I think they're coming into this game a little bit cold, it seems, because this is not the E here as we were seeing from earlier. But Speedrun really stepped it up as well. E here is just aren't ready for this Boomkin rogue damage. It just keeps hitting on to Killy because he is just dropping over and over again, and the offense from E-Hero just isn't there. Yeah, and I think also it, it, it plays into the account. I think both uh, um, Refsi and Customer Support is playing full mastery. They, haste is good when you want to have consistent damage, but mastery, mastery is for the big hits, especially if you're a Boomkin. If you want to have the fattest star search, you want to spec into mastery. And I think the same goes for Asa here. We saw he's in Venom, literally hitting Kili for around 70% of his health. Now, Kili didn't have a wall up, but honestly, he just didn't anticipate all that damage. Yeah, Killy Bear now moving once again across the map. There's customer support there, and this is customer support is giving Killy PTSD here because that is exactly it was so brutal what happened previously. But a great wall up portal there up to the top. Killy Bear getting a little bit of distance, but his revs, revs is up here as well. Killy Bear has moved away from customer support, and revs is going. Well, guess what? I'm here as well. You don't get any time to breathe, and that is exactly what is happening. We do see Lera up there as well on the Resto Druid trying to help out getting damage. I love my dog doing a brilliant job, but once again, Killy Bear just has absolutely no time to breathe. Yeah, yeah, look again, Demi. Oof, yeah, what do you want to say, Gelo? I think you had I a mean, great I mean, they're just on him constantly. Demidar with the grips and the chains of ice. Killy just cannot get away, and he's dropping already so, so soon. We have to use everything here. This is the vendetta from customer support, and these death grips, he just cannot get away from the vendetta. The abomination limb is out. He's technically going for this speed boost, but there's no way he can get there in time. Another grip the ab on limb, and then that's that. Wow. Pure there domination go. from Speedrun. 3 0 in 10 minutes. E Heroes officially won down in the final. What more could you ask for, Kicks? I, I mean, we understood, we saw how uh, how effective Speedrun were on Twin Peaks against German Academy. Honestly, I was expecting E, -Hero e Heroes to put up a little bit more of a fight here. That 3 0 against E Heroes in under 10 minutes is a massive, massive statement from Speedrun. And E-Heroes now obviously get map pick for map number two, but this they have really got to start stepping up because otherwise Speedrun are going to speedrun this grand final. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely going to speedrun the grand final. If this is the pace they're setting for the coming games, wow. But also, I think we need to just shout out customer support and RevC here. It seems like it was a two-man offensive job, but two men soloing the, the, the defensive position and team of E-Heroes. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm actually baffled how, how this even managed to happen. Like, honestly... I, I mean, mean uh, Elo, what do you think? It, was this all according? Was this just because it was Asa? I mean, the damage is huge from Asa. Uh, the DK is really helping out as well. But it's just the the shiv is forty percent. It's it's just huge. It's literally unhealable. So when the damage connects from the uh, convoke with the thirty, you know, he's probably playing full march as you said with berserking. It just hits so so hard, and if he doesn't have trinket and he doesn't pre wall it, he's just gonna get smoked. Yeah. yeah, and that is exactly what happened. And you, you touched upon it there, Gelly. We um, when we spoke about it before the match, just how effective Demidar is on that DK uh, when they're on offense against the flag carrier. And towards the end there again, it was something that you mentioned that Killy just absolutely had 
no no way of escaping at any point because Demidar was just there going, I'm going to keep you slowed. And there was a period where Killy was clawing their way towards that speed boost in the tunnel, didn't end up getting it, and that was actually the end of the game. I mean, honestly, uh, I'm I'm just excited. I think e heroes they are not happy with this. They are not happy going down. Not not just one game, but three zero on Warzone Golfs. The the OG map, and even if some of them are playing TBZ, they're still playing Warzone Golfs, right? You must assume uh, at some cases, right? But I mean, uh, honestly, I, I would like to hear the communication, and I'm wondering, Res, Res, and Boomchin, and and Solo Bing, what were they doing? We had just one Boomy and Rogue from, from Speedrun performing so well, but their players, they were not to be seen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. they really made no impact. I, I I couldn't even tell you if they were in the game, to be honest. Like, no. If I recall that last game, it was just all Speedrun over and over and over again. And a very, very interesting point here as well is uh, we Kelly Bear actually took 2.59 million damage. I Love My Dog, 1.52 less more than a million damage less than Killy Bear, which is, you know, it that is that is an insane difference in the flag carriers there. We are going to be having another flag map, but this one is a very small flag map. And I say flag map, I mean objective map, because uh, it's Gilneas. Gilneas is our map number two. We're getting it out of the I way every here. every map's a flag map. You have to cap something. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. That's true. That is true. Um, but yes, we have Gilneas coming up as our second map here. And... Eddie, we, we've seen Battle for Gunnaeus as the second map every single time, but we are obviously in this best of five grand final. What does this mean for E-Heroes? Have they chosen this map as, uh, you know, more of an even playing ground one that they know that they can succeed at, or can this one potentially play into speedrun's hand? I mean, uh, judging from, from the performance, I think... It... I think heroes are opting into to to Gilnea's simply because okay guys let's reset have a clean team fight put them on the graveyard gain some momentum and some good morale and then go into to game three right I think that is the idea here I don't expect them to triple ink the guardian again I think that was a one time thing they could do against Ulahenio I think speedrun is gonna be prepared for that but nonetheless I mean it's, it's <laughs> Speedrun has been looking hot, so I think this map is a 50-50. Yeah, and the last time we saw Battle for Gilneas, it was E-Heroes against Speedrun, and E-Heroes actually did something, Galu, that you have wanted teams to be doing on Battle for Gilneas for the longest time, which is obviously that split strat at the start where they go for, obviously, the two starting, quote-unquote, um, areas, and they don't necessarily commit to that waterworks Speedrun will probably understand that that is something that could happen here, but this this does give the advantage over to E Heroes because they have the ability to to kind of do both here. Because I imagine Speedrun are going to be wary of either of their straps. Yeah, I mean, that's the question. Does it happen again? It, it, that, can it happen twice if someone knows that you're going to go and ninja their base? Will it work out? I mean, you can kind of tell it's happening because your rogues in stealth, their boomkins in stealth, but then again, you just have two people floating. It's, I don't know, it can really go either way. It's it's up to E heroes not to mind games themselves too hard. Like I was just doing, they're thinking, well, if I know that they know, then we know that they know. <laughs> then you, you just have to try and play their own game and uh, not think too hard about the strategy in the start because it, it, their team fight is absolutely insane as well. Yeah, yeah very true. And I mean, we've seen Speedrun take the first map. Eddie, you you predicted this one taking the first map, and then you predicted the heroes were going to come back three one. Yeah. If if we end up seeing Speedrun taking this map and going two nil up, how much pressure does that put on E Heroes for game number three? I mean, if E Heroes goes down two zero. I think it's going to be a, a 3 over speed run. I think their mental will be destroyed. They are not used to 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 this <laughs> format where they are losing RPG games. This is not a part of their nature to lose. Even Mackie has the legendary quote that is only losers lose. It, it's born from the time when he was 300 and zero in RPGs. So these players, they are so insane. But if they can't perform, then speedrun is going to take it. Yeah, and we see Battle for Gilneas here. Map number two in this best of five grand finals chat. I want to see you getting excited for this because once again, we are seeing speedrun and E-Heroes doing battle on Gilneas, on Gilnean soil. And 
one thing we did see there briefly before we came into this establishing shot is one thing on the side of speedrun we saw in the previous battle for Gunaeus that Gelu was not a fan of. There's no rogue there. Yeah, once again, they've opted in for the Guardian Druid Defender, which when you have the rogue defender on the side of E-Heroes, it can be very susceptible to sort of ninjas, whereas the other way is not effective. You know, you can't have the Guardian pressuring the rogue, but you can have the rogue pressuring the Guardian with a Boomkin, so... I, I don't really like this play here, but I mean, it's what they opted in the first time, they're doing it again. And, uh, you see Isle of My Dog here just sitting there, they're expecting to have Raz coming in here. They can see that he's still in stealth and maybe thinking uh, Willex will come over as well on the rogue. So they're just yeah. double defending. But obviously Raz can see that he's in stealth as well, so he probably knows that he is there. Cool, well, we see yeah. Lyra already moving as well. Boom chin on his foot, cloning Lyra lol here. This, if they want to make a go, this is now, but I love my dog is here though, so I don't think they're going to win this <laughs> 2v3 essentially, but Honestly, E-Heroes, they just drew a healer out from the team fight. I would like to see some pressure going on to Harley or Ace now from, from E-Heroes here as Lyra is floating out. And here, Willix is well opening up. They probably want to kill Lyra and then kill I Love My Dog or Ula Inu. But then again, Lyra lol should be able to survive this. He has DPS to help him if he wants tank. He just took He just took on three members of E-Heroes and he hasn't lost a single point of health. Yeah. That's, uh, that must feel rough for E-Heroes as they now desperately go over to Waterworks, trying to leave Lerolol here, trying to keep on the healer out of the fight. Looks like I Love My Dog is going to go Precious Solar being at Mines. Maybe Willex will peel off here to try and stop him from doing this. Solar being, of course, is a Boomkin so doesn't have that inclination to fully prevent the Ninja Cap. So if he has to trade out his Trinket, they might have to have the Rogue back Mines. You've got to say as well, take a look at this. This is a much better starting on this Battle for Gunaeus for speedrun against the heroes than we saw in the previous matchup in the upper bracket semi-final. They're actually doing a great job in keeping E-Heroes contained. E-Heroes currently do have the uh, the uh, lead, sorry, in points, but we do see Decadine falling here on the side of speedrun. That happened about 10 seconds ago, so they've been without that extra DPS for 10 seconds. We are looking at the mana pools of all of the healers as well. They're a lot looking really solid. Harley and Ace not looking too bad either on the side of E-Heroes. Uh, Dr. Mohammed, Maki, and Zot looking relatively good as well. Decadine did die. E-Heroes haven't been able to turn that into much pressure. We do see, obviously, Blizzo also taking a bunch of damage and keeping an eye out just on these bases. Boomchin stepping away. Is that the moment? No. Boomchin coming back in, trying to figure out... Are they trying to... Oh, here goes Razzy. Is Razzy now going to be stepping over? Looks like we've got some action there. Wiz doing what they can to stop Decadine from coming back into the fight. Sublex taking a bunch of damage. And E-Hero is doing a good job in controlling the rotations here on this map. A uh, great rotation in here. He's just going to come in. He's probably going to try force the, the trinket here from, from Ula Inu here. Ula Inu didn't use anything yet. That is the clone. And this will be... Oh, I love my dog is here. Never mind. Ula Inu can then save his trinket, which is very, very crucial. Having every cooldown available for your guardian is good. But as we see in the team fight, Blizzard just dropped. So even though Eheers are ahead, the, the, the team fight on Waterworks seems to go back and forth. First it was Steam. Now it's Blizzard. And... And the mana as well. Sot, Sot is looking kind of dry. But, ooh, a big push coming here now from, from, from E-Heroes here. They have three DPS here. Is it enough? Oh, and Dean! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Imagine if Dean was able to get that one as well. MVP for the entire... <laughs> no, I mean, he's got the... He's managed to get it. He's managed to get it, surely. Oh, wow. This oh, guy... Oh, wow. Blizzo. Oh, my God. And Blizzo ruining the fun. Wow. If he didn't die at Waterworks, Dean had the space. Wow. Dean is actually insane. Holy shit. Yeah, that, that was, was a pretty lucky respawn coming in there from yeah. Blizzard. Wow. Dying intentionally for Harry. And Decadine did die on that one, but it's not in the team fight, so it doesn't really mean much. But speedrun, I mean, Ace is currently tapped on mana, running on fumes. Zot is not looking too healthy on the side of E-Heroes either. I, I believe Dr. Muhammad has been able to go out and get a little bit of a drink up. So this team fight is still happening over at Watermill, uh, Waterworks, sorry. And it does look as though... I mean, taking a look here, E-Heroes currently have more numbers here, I think. 
We do see we do see more numbers. Is that going to mean much? I love my yeah, dog. I mean, Leryl is definitely out. trying to come back over. Harley's down. Constantly CCing him over again, over and over again. Now Ace is in a sap. Leryl is back into the fight. Ace is in a cheap shot. They're trying to CC him out of the fight as Lera pranks in the middle. Willex just doing such a good job at controlling the healers, but e heroes really need to capitalize on this. They need to take out players. They have no, well, they only have one healer available. They need to quickly try and score a kill on him before Ace can get back in the fight. Harley is on his way as well, so they really, really need to try and get some players down, but Lera somehow is just keeping people alive, but I don't know how he's doing it. Cruzia now about to drop. Lera finally drops, and this should be turning in e heroes favor. Yeah, e heroes are going to be able to take this, but once again, this doesn't. I don't believe that this immediately uh, uh, signals that the match is going to be over. There is I still mean, they haven't I mean, even capped it yet. They're, they're just going to yeah. keep on spinning for a very long time. It looks like. Exactly, and the other danger as well is that e heroes have to be aware of what Decadine is doing. Decadine is currently in this team fight, but if Decadine splits off and starts pulling some more stunts back at mine like we saw previously, once again, that could be huge for them. Ace here in the middle of this brawl, trying to keep everybody alive, stopping them from getting it. Olaino is also here. Decadine in the back, just throwing as much damage as they possibly can. And e heroes hasn't actually managed to get this capture yet. Cruzia stepping over. Is Cruzia looking at potentially getting a pick over? onto mines here looking at ninjuring the base and i'm really liking this from speedrun is that they are kind of almost playing e heroes game on them they said they saw what e heroes did to them in the first map and now they're turning it around and they're saying okay we're going to put the split pressure onto you are you going to be able to react to this decadine taking a bunch of damage needs to get out of there as quickly as possible looks like they are going to be kept nice and healthy mackie looking relatively low on heat uh, on mana but on the side of speedrun harley ace looking really solid I actually just thinking about a bit of a composition, I really like the fact that e heroes chose not to go for the Guardian but for the triple boomy simply because they like to ink so much so you don't you, you can easily have a boomy defender if you just keep track of the enemies so great adaptation for them uh, speedrun opting into the Guardian right because it is the safer choice but boomies of course have a bit more utility when if you want to do more than just defend right but here, Lira Lol is uh, managed to, to, to stay alive here and, and come back, right? And Harley is coming in as well now. So all three healers from Speedrun are back at Waterworks. Boomchin already now is starting to one for Lighthouse. Are uh, E-Heroes trying to go for Lighthouse now? Solar being moving as well. Maybe they, they want to put the pressure away. They knew that Speedrun regrouped. They know they, they want to do something, right? Even though they are ahead. And, and this is it, right? A triple ink, two boomies and one rogue. Yeah, Olino there, we do see I love my dog dropping back as well. Is this going to be enough? And Sublex coming back as well. So we do see three players out of the team fight here in the middle. Boomchin is is, is taken out of stealth there. Olino doing what they can to defend here, doing a great job. Solar being moving over. I love my dog looking as though they are looking quite comfortable. Wiz gets locked up, but we do have another ink. Cruzia and Decadini coming in here as well. So this is something that E-Heroes have to react to. Solar being is coming over. Is it going to be enough? I believe it will be but once again i'm loving this from speedrun reacting to this and kind of making e-heroes react to them in turn whoa they got it speedrun hey, got it oh. he managed to get it and 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 Raz, he, he used his fury of elun uh, which spun it for a bit but then dean uh, pulled the elun away from the flag i'm pretty sure and Raz, Raz still has his trinket why is he not trinket into spin honestly this can spell disaster for e heroes even if if speedrun can manage to stabilize here at mines it, i mean that's that looks like a, a 2-0 in the in the making it does yeah, but I take a look at the level thing which, uh, the cap it there maybe he was out of range or something that was that's a really unfortunate play from Raz. That's he's gonna be kicking himself after that one, but they really need to ink pretty hard here now. They gotta make sure that they don't lose waterworks either, because if they get free base, then well that is absolutely tragic. Looks like they're really fighting for Lighthouse here, and they actually cap it over. So the map is kind of turning a little bit even now again, but they are behind on points. Yes, yeah. and that is the important thing. E heroes were ahead by two points, but now they are behind. So the play is now on their turn. And 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 Kex, I think they're gonna take a team fight here. Uh, this is something you like, right? These big brawls, Kex. 
Oh, absolutely. I love myself a good brawl. And I was just going to say, we did see Laralol moving over to Mines to help support that capture to make sure it stayed with them. The problem you had is Ace was dead. It left Harley here at Waterworks alone. Harley is almost tapped on mana. Ace is back up. And it looks as though Laralol is moving in once again. I have no idea what Laralol is doing, but how they are staying alive is absolutely beyond me whilst keeping everybody else alive. Now, Speedrun, they just have to keep control. They have to stay calm here. Aleno is being locked down here. E Heroes still haven't capped that base yet so speedrun are gaining more and more points here finally lighthouse does turn over to ehero side but they need to be aware that they cannot lose waterworks if speedrun take that and they take two bases this point this this uh this this points advantage that speedrun have is just going to get bigger and bigger yeah just look at willex he is so annoying in the back line just not allowing the healers of ace just to get into the fight essentially making it look like uh they're just, well, they're just missing a healer in the fight, and if they can take out Lera, then that'll be absolutely huge for E-Heroes, but he does a bounce back into the back lines, and Ace now comes into the fight. Three healer healers now for speedrun. Felix, I'm not really sure what he'll do now. Maybe he'll just keep inking on uh, mines, because uh, his role of just slowing everyone down is kind of negated now since everyone is alive. Yeah, and uh, also one thing, uh, I think a lot of nerves are hitting a lot of teams in this tournament. Again, we see the communication mistakes from e -Heroes when they lost the base. Both Sol uh, both Boomchin and, and Solar Bing, no, sorry, Ras and Solar Bing had, had trinkets and, and were possibly in a situation to, to spin mines. I think the nerves are getting to them. The pressure, especially also being one zero down speedrun, really, really choking e -Heroes out, trying to, trying to make them sweat e even more than, than you expect from, from 10 gamers. Yeah, Mackie down on the side of E here as well. That is one healer that is that is currently missing. Speedrun needs to take advantage of that. Take down another healer. Maybe a DPS Zot is currently tapped on mana. Harley and Ace have been able to get drinks off. Lera still looking relatively solid. I've been so impressed with Lera throughout this entire map here, doing a great job in not only covering people inking on bases, but covering the main fight here. Blizzo taking a bunch of damage as well. Dr. Mohammed is completely tapped. Mackie is the only player that has mana on the side of E heroes healer-wise. Meanwhile, Speedrun and looking relatively comfortable. If they can get a kill onto a healer, Dr. Muhammad goes down. This was real pressure on Blizzo dropping down as well. This is a massive, massive turn for Speedrun. If they can take Waterworks once again, the points continue to tick and E-Heroes are going to be in real trouble. Well, are it going down too? I believe just surviving on the tiniest little bit of health. Looks like Cedar's been popped. Shaman taking them down. The people are dropping left and right for E-Heroes. Speedrun looking still incredibly healthy and I believe this could be a massive point here in game number two of this grand finals yeah and how does e heroes recover there's no guardian on their side there's no one there's no secure spin as we have seen in any other game speedrun bringing the game to e hero self on their map they want to show you want a team fight sure we're gonna wipe you off the floor yeah willex coming in trying to be a nice little discount guardian rogue living with that cheat death but it doesn't last too long as he goes down as well. The base flipping wow. over to speedrun. <laughs> and they tried to re-engage with Raz is just going to die here as well. And everyone's just getting slowly killed. And I mean, Zot as well. That's, that's so bad. There's so much time burnt off the clock now with those deaths. They need to regroup and go again. But they're holding it. If Raz can live this, it's really good. And if he dies, when well, that's just like 20, 30 seconds. But they're going to have to yeah. wait. Yep, looks as though they're setting up to potentially go into mine. And this is this is Speedrun's position now. They have to defend both of these bases. And they've shown, a, you know, over both Warsong Gulch and this map so far, that E-Heroes, yes, they may be able to make some plays over these, but Speedrun have, have, have been pretty pretty evenly matched against them in these sort of positions. There is a big ink coming in on mines. I'm not sure whether they're going to be able to get enough people here, but they do have Leralol here. And honestly, for this map so far, Leralol has been my absolute MVP. Yeah, and this will be the large ditch effort, the last fight for E-Heroes. They have one last try to secure a base. If they wipe now, the game will definitely spell 2-0 to speedrun. So E-Heroes putting the pressure onto mines. Willix sh slowing Harley here, but not too, too great, except, but then again, Lyra is dead, Ace is dead, Suplex is dead. If E-Heroes can clutch this one back, then, I mean, the, the game has swung again. 
Yeah, yeah they need to be dropping careful. on the side of speedrun. Mackie going for the cap here. Maybe he's going to get it. Boom Chin tries to stop them down. Blizzo gets the intervene onto Mackie, and there is the cap. Wow. On the two mines. This is back and forth here. This is what we wanted out of our grand finals. Speedrun need to be careful. They don't want to focus too hard on the fact they've lost this. Harley is probably going to die here. Once again, that is another split kill. That does mean that we end up in a horrible position if they're having to wait for Harley. They need to make sure they are defending this, but they also need to be keeping an eye on Lighthouse too. E-Heroes have effectively they've sent a lot of people over and this looks as exactly what Leralol and Demidar are currently looking at looks as though they're gonna potentially take a rush here we do see Ace and Harley still alive still slowing people down on the side of E-Heroes but they're starting to move over now we see Sot and Blizzo they're not sure where they need to be going if they can if if yeah, oh, if speedruns can take Lighthouse here, once again this could be huge I'm not sure whether they're gonna be able to do it the presence of E-Heroes there seems to be a little bit too much Oof. I'm just uh, trying to eat a bit of the data here we are shown on screen because looking at this, this is honestly a comfortable position for E-Heroes now. If they, just, if they can just stall this game out for two to three minutes, this will at least equalize the game to 1-1. One, one. That base secure we just saw watch so huge and a big credit to 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 Willix on Rogue here, slowing Harley. So essentially Speedrun was too healing at mines and Harley came just in one or two seconds too late. And and here, I mean it looks like Speedrun doesn't know what they want to do as well. They are fighting here in between the bases. So I mean Miguel, do you think Speedrun can can come back? Maybe. I mean, Dogs Muhammad just fell here and their team fight is not too bad. They're getting damage onto Mackie now. He has no trinket available. Mind control goes out onto him. And Lera, Ace, Decadine, and I Love My Dog are pretty far pushed in onto Lighthouse. So they actually have the positional advantage here. Uh, E-Heroes actually have to push on top of them to try and do anything. And if they could kill these overextending melees, then perhaps they can score some sort of pressure. Raz drops as well here. They're looking for another kill onto Zot. The blinding sleep goes onto him. But Dr. Muhammad has joined back into the fight very, very soon. He has respawned. He needs to try and get there before Mackie drops. Mackie just able to heal himself a little bit. Wallerick is so dangerously low as well. He's drained lifing as hard as he can. Right in the back. There's Dr. Muhammad right there. Mackie in the CS. Lera Lol, though, breaking off over to Mines. Maybe trying to get a drink. Perhaps, or I, um, it looks like they're trying to peel off of it. Yeah, a little bit. I'm not sure whether they've figured out that Lighthouse may be potentially a lost cause, but if they can continue to keep E-Hero split and they can continue this pressure on, we've seen how effective it can be. We see, do see Decadine coming in here. The team fight has been going speedruns way so far. They've been getting kills, but nothing else out of that. They haven't been able to turn that pressure into a capture onto Lighthouse, but this is still an incredibly close game. But the longer this goes on, the more it works in favor of E-Heroes. They're currently sitting at about 100 points, just over 100 points advantage. But that could change at any moment if they can, if E Heroes, if, oh, yeah. there we go, Lera Log potentially switching uh, this over. Lera Log is, is he's moving from uh, Waterworks. They're coming to mine. Solar Bing is going to have to defend against two Druids as only a Boomkin. He's been roared. Can he slop the cap? Lera capping. He finally gets Moonfired right at the nick of time. Harley here now as well. Three on one for Solar Bing. Unfortunately, they all share the same DR. So. But this clone is it's too late. He gets the gap in the clone. He's able to stop them both. Great peels from Solar being the rest of wow. E-Heroes are here to defend the base. And that was just absolutely insane. That was so close. Honestly, if Speedrun would have got that there, I believe that may have been enough for them to potentially win, win it. But with E-Heroes defending that, I can't see a way for Speedrun to come back into this, which is so unfortunate because they played this so, so well. But yeah. they're still trying here. They're still trying. They're still trying, and maybe it is another our boom team is here. And also, I would like to give big, big, big credit to Solar Bing. Not only did he manage to hold it in a 1v3 situation, as soon as he saw Lyra cap, did you guys notice? He pressed raw. He knew there was a druid on top of him. He predicted that Ula Hindu was going to raw. So as soon as Solar Bing roared, Ula Hindu had to trinket raw, cast clone. And that wasn't enough time. So honestly, Solar Bing really playing to, 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 to his own strength here and keeping his calm. And, and with this, this will spell a victory for E-Heroes. There is no way speedruns comes back now. They need three bases if they want to have a chance. 
Yeah, they need three bases, and I don't think it's going to happen. We're getting a team fight here at mine. E Hero is looking far too healthy. The the mana looking not looking great for Zotamaki, but currently with sort of there's eighty less than eighty points for E Heroes to take this here. If if Speedrun needed to do it, it needed to happen there, and it hasn't worked out. Zola Zola being a great defense here on mines and E Heroes, they are going to be taking battlefield battle for Gilneas on map number two of this best of five but speedrun made them work for it yeah and a redemption game from from solar being here in the end he was one of the players that lost mines initially with brass but in the end he he manages to clutch it out and and hold stand right and equalizing the game and honestly this just i mean I, i'm just more excited for the next one what do you think Kello? Yeah, I think that's, yeah, exactly. Next game is going to be crazy, but it's like how much damage Wall Rigs did compared to literally everyone else. Yep, 5.6 million in the, the next game. He was the entire time while some people were floating, but my he was. God. Yeah. yeah, true. But that is that is huge. You love, love to see the game. These sort of games, these are what we want to be seeing in the grand final. Speedrun the Heroes, that map was back and forth the entire time. Speedrun potentially could have pulled that one out it didn't quite work out for them e heroes staying calm and you know it, i i enjoyed speed run we saw previously what happened between these two teams e heroes won the battle for Gilness relatively comfortably beforehand this time speed run made them work and now speed run do get the map pick for map number three in this best of five and eddie what are you expecting from them i mean i expect speed run i think they're gonna go for temple they have been looking hot on Temple, even though they uh, choked. Uh, but um, I mean, honestly, I'm I'm just thinking still about the last game because I'm just wondering about Ulehinu's talents as well. Why was she not playing Bash? You don't really need Mass Root as a tank when you're not playing FC maps. You know, it's good on FC maps so you can slow the melees running after you, except the, the Rogue, for example. But on this map, I would have liked to see the Bash so he could have raw Bash into Clone instead and and actually get the base. But I mean. It, it, everything comes down to to small micro mechanics, right? We as we saw, it. so I mean, even the talent plays a part as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we do have our second map pick here. Obviously, Speedrun lost that second map, so they do pick the map for map number three. And Gallo, we're seeing Twin Peaks here, and we have seen what Speedrun can do on these flag maps. We saw Warsong Gulch, where it was a 10 minute three zero against E Heroes. Twin Peaks for Speedrun here. Honestly, are we going to see them taking a 2-1 lead? Are we going to see this uh, advantage flip back over to speedrun once again? Uh, maybe. I mean, it, it seems to, to very much depend on who's Horde and who's Alliance compared yeah. when we saw the last game. So, I mean, uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. If if uh, speedrun a Horde, then I think they can take it. <laughs> and if not, I think Eero as well as well. Well, only time will tell. And that also means that we do get our flag carriers back. Killy and I love I love my dog. And chat, I want to know. I, I want to know. I want to know. Are you team Killy? Or are you team I love my dog? Are you team Killy or team I love my dog? I want to know who you who you are voting for in your flag carrier. Who would you take to your who would you take to your flag map as your flag carrier? And I think the biggest thing that we took from Warsong Gulch is how effective Demidar is on that DK, stopping stopping the you know pretty much the entire te the entire defensive team from from staying together as a group. Eddie, do you feel yeah. as though E Heroes will have identified that and potentially used that as something uh, to focus on on their defense? I mean, I hope so, but I still feel, think that their defense will be weaker than when speedrun, and it's simply because of the Dean factor. I mean, I love Warwick, I regard him as the best, even on my tier list, he is S tier, where Dean is A tier, but Dean is the port guard. <laughs> so, I mean, if they get hard side, I'm sure speedrun can close that one out, but... Mm. I mean, Eos... It's rough, man, it's rough, because these games are close and tight. No, oh, absolutely, and... For those for those people that are watching this grand final here and they're confused as to what the difference is between obviously Horde and Alliance there, uh, I was going to ask Galu, but I'll ask Eddie instead. Um, so the uh, <laughs> so the difference between Twin Peaks, Horde, and Alliance, uh, why would that make such a difference for the tactics of these teams? 
So the, the major difference is the, the layout of the hall base. The hall base is placed on top of water, which means that when when you have a warlock, you can swim under the base and, and place your portal down there. So when we see this warlock rift, everyone is going down into the water. Whereas on alliance side, you can only really port them outside of the base. And the, 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 the length the teams has to run is simply just way shorter on alliance so also alliance is maybe a bit harder to kite on as you can only really go up and down in 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 the base we see when he wild charges up and down if you remember moving from the previous game so horde is definitely a, a superior side uh, for, for for twin peaks i mean horde is the superior side overall i've got it tattooed on me it's the superior Ooh, side. i love that one you know, it's, it's the superior side doesn't matter whether you're playing battlegrounds pve it's just the superior side let's face it um now, E Heroes obviously made to work for that battle for Gunaeus there, and we have seen speedrun being very, very effective in these flag maps, Galu. You've played obviously with E Heroes before. How would you how would you rate them so far? Do you feel as though they're they're still coming into this looking a little bit cold, or has speedrun just stepped up their game? Uh usually they're a lot better in team fight, I think. Willex is playing really, really well. He's stopping everyone from doing anything they want. But uh, the rotations have been a little bit sloppy, and then that not being able, that not capping the base, or sorry, not being able to spin there was a bit poor from them, because they they should never should have lost mines in the first place. No. Yeah, true. I mean, if we'd have seen, obviously, you know, one of the clutch moments was uh, Lerolol going over with Olaino trying to capture the mines there. If if that would have happened, Eddie, do you feel as though we might have had a very different story here? Could it have been? Uh, do you think we'd have ended up coming into this two nil speed run? Or do you feel as though Solar Bing's defense of that actually saved the game for E Heroes? I think not only did he save the game, he also saved their mental. If they were to lose that base, I'm sure the comms would not be nice words. I'm sure we, we can't mention some of the words on stream that would be said. So so I'm very happy that they managed to 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 hold out. It's also their map pick, right? So if they were to lose on that, uh, they would be in shambles. But we we have to take into account that that I mean, it's it's just it comes down to all the margin plays. It's it's literally one cooldown here, one misuse here, and it's gone. So, I mean, whew, it's tight. Yeah, I, I think you've hit the nail on the head. We are dealing with some very very tight margins in this grand final. Once again, it is a best of five. We are on a map number three against E here between E Heroes and Speedrun. Speedrun took the first map, Warsun Gulch. A sub 10 minute 3 0 against E Heroes. Very, very impressive. Uh, obviously, E Heroes lost the first map. They did get to choose the next one. They went for Battle for Gineas. And even though they came out on top, it was definitely not an easy victory for them. And now, obviously, Speedrun getting to choose Twin Peaks as map number three. We know how effective they can be on uh, you know on these flag maps and, and galu what do e heroes have to do here i mean you've mentioned obviously how important it is depending on which side you are playing on but what do e heroes have to do to negate this fantastic offense we've seen from speedrun on these flag maps they just need their own offense to be equally as good they just had no presence really last game i i don't think the camera was ever on ever really on them because they never really did anything that is true. That is true. It did feel that happened. And we obviously saw just how dangerous that rogue can be because Killy was effectively just getting torn to shreds by customer support that entire game, Eddie. Yeah, he was. Killy was not having a great game and I, I'm sure he, he was not having fun either with, with the rogue and Boomy always on top of him. It, I mean, it, the only moments he was safe was when the moments his Incarn was running. Besides that, he, he was struggling and... I really actually like that Speedrun chose the flag map because they had such a great performance on Twin Peaks. And also, if they are to lose that, they still have their Kogmogu uh, as, a, as, a, as a third. So, um, I mean, honestly, great games in coming and uh, uh, maybe it's going to be a 3-2 now. Honestly, I, I thought 3-1 E-Heroes, but with this flag map coming in now, yeah, oof, I think Speedrun can take it. You mentioned Temple of Kotmogu there, and we saw, obviously, in the previous series between these in the upper bracket uh, semi-final, uh, we saw Temple of Kotmogu speedrun actually had the lead in that map, and they yeah. made, honestly, and we all agreed that they made a mistake by picking up all four of those orbs. Is, you know, potentially an E-Hero scared of picking Temple? Because if it wasn't for the mistake that speedrun made, 
they could have potentially lost that one. They could have moved down to the lower brackets. So they may be looking at Temple of Kotmogu and thinking to themselves, that is actually a little bit of a riskier pick than we were planning for, Eddie. Yeah, but what maps does E-Heroes have left? I mean, they just used their Guinea's gold card. <laughs> that is uh, their one secure win, at least on paper, and that was barely a win. Now we only have objective maps left. We have Eye of the Storm, uh, which they don't like. We have AB, which is, I mean, that's a toss-up. And then Flag Map and, and Temple. Honestly, speedrun, it's good maps for them. I hope E-Heroes are not... Uh, completely in shambles, uh, you know, after that close game. I, I think they, they're going to come in hot and I think they're going to come in angry as well. I think they want to I think they want to make a, sp a statement with this next game. So so I hope that they, they perform well. I mean, who knows? Grand final game five between E-Heroes and Speedrun. Gallo, it could come down to a Silver Shard Mines. Yeah, that? I mean, I don't think Silver Shard Mines would be too bad for E-Heroes. It's nope. generally... Not a bad map for them. There's a lot of team fighting going on. There's a lot of splitting off. Their boomkins are very aware. Their rogues are very aware. So uh, I don't think Silver Shard Mines are a bad map for E-Heroes at all. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that is true. And one of the important things as well is, you know, whoever loses this map, this map three number three, does get to choose the next map. Obviously, that's how it's worked throughout this entire tournament. And honestly, if I'm on the side of E-Heroes, I desperately want to, you know, I will want to win this map, even though it does mean that Speedrun do get to pick the next map, and they probably will pick something like Eye of the Storm. It does mean that you then get that, you know, you almost have to think about it. What map do we want to pick next? What you know, if we win this and they pick another map, then we get the pick for the final map. So that potentially gives us the advantage. There's a lot of things to think about, Eddie. Yeah, it definitely is. And uh, and I think if Speedrun wins this, I think uh, as uh, Gelo says, we're going to see a Silver Shard Mine from E-Heroes. If they manage to win that, I expect the last game to be Temple. Now, I mean, everything is in the, is in the hands of E-Heroes right now. They... they I'm sure that they are not happy with their initial Warzone Gold's performance. I'm sure that they're not going to get 3 0 now. I'm pretty sure they're not going to get 3 0 <laughs> At least I hope for them, or else their mentors will, will, will be in shambles. <laughs> <laughs> if, I mean, if we do see Speedrun taking this map here, and E Heroes obviously have the, ch have the choice, and you've mentioned Temple, if we do see E Heroes winning the map and Speedrun have the choice for the next map, what do you think the chances of us seeing an Eye of the Storm, Gelu? Because the previous series, we did see Speedrun with Eye of the Storm, and, and they looked so comfortable against E-Heroes. E-Heroes, obviously, you know, they worked very, very hard, but at the end of the day, it, 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 speed, uh, speed Run didn't look as though they were out of depth there. So, you know, Eye of the Storm could also be a possibility. Yeah, I mean, if they lose, I think Speedrun will take it for sure. It's there. They love the knocks, it seems, and they were very good at it. So I don't think they've lost an Iron Storm yet. But just a quick uh, note here I want to bring out E Heroes are on the hold side. Yeah, they're also playing double sub rogue, which is kind of wacky, even though after the, they saw the power of the Asa rogue. But I assume they're going to have one defense, one off, which is. We haven't seen anyone do this yet, the double rogue on boot, uh, capital flag. That is oh, true. They. Uh, the other thing I have noticed as well is they've got the double rogue, but speedrun do have the arms warrior, and we've spoken about just how dangerous that mortal strike is. Eddie, you're a big fan of having that mortal strike. You know, as you've yep. mentioned previously, you have the mortal strike, and it is it is effectively 25% extra damage when you just take a look at the raw numbers that are available there. So, is yep. is that going to work in so is that going to work in speedrun's advantage? And, and is this double rogue play here, whilst it may be different, is it effective? I mean, I honestly think that the uh, double rogue on FC map is always quite effective because, as Scalo mentioned, you can have one offensive and one defensive. And we have seen how much evidence shined in D, and we have seen how much customer support shined in O. So it is uh, a completely fine to play. And also, if you just, uh, wow, with the death of Dean here, with if we return to the previous season in, in BFA, double rogue was meta, and you always had either one or two offensives. Uh, you usually split them up, right? And 
And also, double broke is kind of good if you are ahead, right? If let's say that the E-Heroes get a, a complete defensive wipe, they can suddenly send two rogues offensive, right? And and that will spell danger for, for, for I Love My Dog. But I Love My Dog seems to be crossing here quite safely. He has used his Incarn, he has used his Baskin. Kili is coming up the ramp as well. We see both Recipe and Customer Support waiting here for Kili. If they can catch Kili before he even picks it up, that would be really bad. Look, they are trying to find him, but okay, Kili gets the flag here. The damage instantly going down on him though. Customer again playing the ass a lot of damage a lot of envenoms proccing here again we already see the the the, the mark getting used as well uh, for for the damage but i mean kill is gone yeah that acid damage is absolutely disgusting he drops him yeah. to about 60 percent in three globals with the vendetta that's a crazy yeah. damage going on there. why so i wonder why the e heroes rogues no one stops the asset themselves they're playing this double sub but uh, uh, yeah, I think that might be an error, but we see here on the offense, we've got the smoke bomb onto I Love My Dog, we've got Solar Bing, the Incarn, they're trying to get as much damage out as possible onto I Love My Dog, but he just sits it all. doesn't care, he just bark skin, survival instincts, and seems to live through his onslaught. Yeah, and also looking at the stacks here, the first stack has started to tick in. We have to remember that Guardians need to hit around six stacks, or at six stacks, they can't move as much as they as we usually see. They lose a great deal of mobility. But look at Revsi here. Revsi has Berserker and he has Incarn. He's just waiting for Killy to line his healers. Oh, I'm, I'm kind of sorry we don't see it because I think Revsi is going to open onto Killy here. Yeah, we see Survival Instinct from Killy, Regen from Killy, Basket from Killy. Literally every cooldown used from Killy just due to Revsi being ahead with the Incarn. But, I mean, ooh, he, he Killy managed to survive. I love my dog. He's still taking a lot of pressure, carding around. We see here again, Revsi versus Killy and Revsi. Oh, the best as well. The stoppers. The the read. Oh, oh, Dr. Muhammad saves him. Oh. Killy is playing with absolute fire there, but he's not away from Revs yet. Revs is going to continue to chase Killy down, basically saying, I am not finished with you here. In comes Mackie to help out as well, but Revs is so, so dangerous. Sublex actually dropping on the side of speedrun here. So looking as though that defense is starting to fall so slightly. Keep an eye on I Love My Dog. Doing what they can to stay alive. It's looking pretty comfortable at the moment, but that can turn it any point especially with those rogues there raz doing what they can as well a great grip i love my dog though taking so much damage staying alive just about solar being doing their doing the work they can as well same with boonchin they're putting the pressure on the tables have turned on these flag maps previously we were seeing i love my dog getting a little bit of a free ride on warsong gulch but things have changed now because i love my dog is having to work yeah, it's interesting we had Willex in the offense as well, dying there. He wasn't, he, once again, he looks like he's running offense instead of taking that role that Avadance was in the, in the D. Killy just kiting the entire map. And that Willex now with him interrupting Revzi here. Killy kiting very far away from Revzi as far as he can. But customer support on his tail with that vendetta. Zepsis popped as well. The wall comes out from Killy. He incarns, he's kiting very very well but this night fey rogue is just on top of him and he just doesn't really let him escape killy now well he is escaping a little bit but for how long his incarnation is going to fall very soon oh. lera lol sneaking up behind him maybe trying to get a cyclone onto him just so he's sat in place for his dps to just come and rain chaos on him Look at that, you don't see that very often, jumping into the water and immediately going into a killy whale there, trying to make sure they're getting across that uh, that body of water relatively quickly. And I Love My Dog once again taking a bunch of pressure. They tried to knock I Love My Dog back down again, it didn't quite work out. There comes another big knock. Zot is here up by themselves and they are going to be taking a bunch of damage. I Love My Dog still looking... Still looking like they're under a fair bit of pressure. More pressure than we saw during Warsong Gulch. And I think that they've taken what you said to heart here, Galio. I believe that they are looking at putting just as much offense in as they possibly can. And they have done it. it we do see E-Heroes are currently the only ones carrying a flag. Killy needs to get into the flag room. It is going to be picked up, though, I believe, by Revs. But Speedrun are losing players left and right. Sublex has dropped down. Ace has dropped down. I love my dog is down. Revs is being very, very careful here. He knows that there is going to be somebody there trying to defend. And now they're going to try and turn their attention on to Killy. 80 stacks currently on Killy, and as soon as Revs tries to pick up this flag, immediately, Wiz is just going to be there to take oh, him. There it is. There it is. There's a ring of peace from Mackie, though, up there, trying to stop everybody from coming through. Killy is still really, really slow. Is Killy going to be able to get there in time? I don't believe they are. Lera coming in, trying to get it, and it looks as though they're gripped back in. The fantastic grip there 
I believe also stopped them from capping it. And it was picked up also on the side of Lera. Killy's still taking a bunch of damage. They want to take care of they want to take care of Lera here as well. But Killy is looking so rough. So much damage onto him. And it looks as though it has been returned. I imagine Lera has also died here as well. Let's take a quick look. It looks as though it has happened. There's the flag currently stood in the middle of the base. A massive brawl between these two teams. And we are going to get flags pretty much completely reset here. A beautiful trade kill here from 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 e heroes in the defensive and also from of course ref shift and they managed to kill Kili just before lira dropped then lira dropped the refs even picked the flag just in case then uh, chose to drop it after but honestly i think that that they should have gotten that cap there i think with the monk ring there and if they were just stopping lira lol as uh, willix had caught refsy with the sap just on flag point so and I also think maybe Revsy should have anticipated that Willix were waiting for him to pick. Maybe he should have pressed raw, you know, because you know that the rogue is in defense. And if he's not protecting Kili, I mean, he's probably waiting for the next guy to pick, right? So you can always try to think ahead. And here, I love my dog moving across middle here. Kili is coming into the flag room, though. And I love my dog. He has all his cooldowns available. So he's not in such great trouble yet. But but look at Kili. Kili is coming in, but they have people waiting. Customer support coming in. But I think Solar Bing is there as well. Yeah, Solar Bing is here to score it in worst case. Yeah, and Kelly is just... Oh, he's been sapped here. Great roar from Solar Bing on to customer support, stopping him from doing any resap so he can get out and through with this soul shape. Escaping now, trying to avoid the mass onslaught of speedrun as they are all on that ramp, choosing to go around here connects with Dr. Mohammed, who should allow him to get any freedoms if need be. Revzy sneaking up in cap form, gets the one second raw. Typhoon's him. He wants to try and clone him, but he's just getting feared up by Wallerix. Lera now coming in with the roots. They're trying to CC him as much as possible, but they can't really seem to stop him. Damage from the side of E here is coming on to speed run, though. I love my dog. Just seems like I know he's a tank, but he's a very tanky tank compared to Killy. Every time Killy gets connected to, he just seems like he's getting dropped over and over again. Whereas on the side of E-Heroes, their damage doesn't seem to work in those ways, as the Astrogue seems to pay dividends for speedrun. The, the Subrogue seems a little bit less bursty for the side of E-Heroes. And I love my dog even going for a quick nap there as well. Got a lot of time. Killy Bear doing what they can. But again, it, it's great to see, obviously, customer support just spending as much uptime as possible. We we see, I mean, what is happening here? Zoss is currently... He DC'd under port. He dc that is super unfortunate. There we go, coming back. We're going to see exactly how quickly Zot comes back into it. I believe they are back in. Yeah, they are using cooldown, so they are back in. So once again, here comes Revs, though. Revs is there with Killy Bear, and Killy Bear's going to get sick of the sight of Revs before the end of this map, because Revs is almost always in Killy Bear's face. Yeah, Revs is playing just as you want to play as a Boomkin. If you are a Boomy, you want to spectate Revs here at Revs and see what he's doing. He's always staying ahead of the tank. He's always trying to get the solo convokes where the tank is lining his healers, you know, from, from the back. So, I mean, Revs is, is playing so insane, not just in this game, but but overall. And and I love my dog here. He's standing in a lot of damage here. I, I, I I'm... Oh, great port by Dean here, saving I Love My Dog. And, and I was going to mention this as well. We haven't really seen Warwick utilize the, the ports in D as we saw Speedrun do on the hot side. Oh, God. Wow. I don't know what just happened there, but Killy Bear just got gripped into another dimension. Are they going to be able to get the cap? No, it looks as though it was picked up there. Who picked it up? It looks like Zot has picked it up and has immediately booked it out of that out of that base, which is exactly what they want to be doing here. And actually, I love my dog in a really rough position here. Trapped down here. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to wild charge back up. They are going to be able to stabilize people coming back here. But Zot, a fantastic pickup there. That was so, so clutch, so quick in being able to pick that up. Getting themselves across the map. Mackie is there with them as well. Are, is there anybody there that can come over? We do see Revs coming over, potentially setting something up here with Zot, trying to make sure that everybody is nice and covered here. There comes the fear. Mackie there as well. In comes Boomchin. This is really rough for them. If Zot gets picked off with his 60 stacks here, then Isle of My Dog is going to be able to take this one back. Zot is taking so much damage. Revs needs to be very, very careful, though. If Revs dies, 
here. This could potentially give uh, E-Heroes a really nice little uh, nice little gap to get the flag back over to their it. side. And they've managed to swap it over to Killy Bear. Killy Bear picking it back up once again. What a great setup there from Speedrun. Demidar coming in. I believe Demidar and customer support were there. And they, they almost one-shot Killy Bear. But unfortunately, Zot was in the other base and was able to pick it up and actually got relatively far across the map. Quite impressed with that. Yeah, a really cool play from Zolt there. I think he used a self grit into a yep. friendly ring of peace and just swapped the flag on that. None of the enemy could really catch up to him or, you know, go into the ring of peace or to get knocked away. And they get the swap on the Killy Bear. But I really hope Killy Bear will be able to outlast I love my dog because he just gets completely shredded by this uh, boomkin of Revzi. Yeah, very, very true. We do see Raz coming over here trying to do as much damage as they possibly can. It doesn't look like it's enough. And as you mentioned, you know, Killy Bear is, is a bear tank. They've got a lot of health. They take a lot of damage. But I Love My Dog just seems to survive so much more. And as I say, that court there currently taking a bunch of damage. But once again, being able to survive through that, we do obviously see some legs coming up. Great knockout there from Ace, knocking people off it. And Killy Bear is getting stuck here. Revs is there. I believe we all see customer support there doing as much damage as possible. And the, the longer this goes on, Gelu, it looks as though speedrunners are starting to get more of an advantage. It's not quite showing yet on the scoreboard, but just taking a look at what, you know, what they're getting in regards to resets on the on the on the uh, flags speedrun slightly ahead in my eyes yeah i mean i, mean, I think Warwick in defensive really just needs to utilize his rifts a bit more because i'm sure if this was dean on the other side the entire team would be in the water half the game and no one would yeah. really be connecting on to killy the killy now into the sap into the kidney shot it trinkets out the bark skins used but the vendetta has been pulled onto him very, very soon. The Vendetta is just waiting there. Cosmos up gets stunned, but next stun, I think Killy's going to go down, and they need to. Oh, but either my dog dies. The flag gets picked up. Hey, Ace, Ace is going to die as well. The flag gets picked up by Harley. Can someone pick it up after them? Because if Killy Bear can get back in, it, it gets returned. Can Killy Bear cap the flag? We will find out very soon. No, but really Kevzi there. Is yeah, Demidar's there. there. Demidar is slowing everybody down. Revs is also there picking it up as well. So we now have Revs, obviously, with the flag. Or taking a look to try and pick it up. Wiz taking it, doing a good job. Killy Bear does drop as well. And I believe the flag has been returned. Revs picks up uh, E-Hero's flag. So they're going to run out. So once again, flags have been returned. We do see the move over to uh, I Love My Dog. I Love My Dog gets taken down. We all see Revs dying there, unfortunately. Leralol coming in, trying to take advantage of that. But... Once again, these flags reset here. We're 14 minutes into this Twin Peaks here, and neither team is able to is, is, has been able to score one. And there goes I love my dog picking up the flag once again and starting starting this race across the map. Yeah, I love my dog. He needs to run fast because Killy is already moving ahead, as you see, jumping in the water here, moving towards the enemy base and stuff. Now. It, it, this game couldn't be closer than it is. It's cross kill on cross kill right before the flex button. I was wondering that Kili was not going to return to to the spot. He was at 11 stacks, right? And we saw the power of Chowman and Demidar really, really dealing devastating blows into the into the skin of the bear. So, but I love my dog here. He seems to have crossed, but but again, look at Ras. Ras is already with Kili. And, and and honestly, that just means that, that Killy, he can run without Incarn. Uh, I, uh, I love my dog soon has his Incarn though, but 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 Killy should have a pretty good time crossing. Yeah, Killy's going to move out of here, but he's going to move into pretty much every single Everyone, player yeah. here. So he's going to have to make sure that he has everything up. Incarn is available, so uh, that's going to be a slight worry off, obviously, Killy Bear's mind. But... Uh, doing a good job here. Looks as though they've pretty much ignored Killy Bear for the main part. They want to keep I Love My Dog alive, but... Oh, in comes customer support, though. Customer support doing what they can to uh, potentially take Killy Bear down here. There's still very, very few stacks. Only 10 stacks on this flag, which means that Killy Bear is going to be relatively safe. And there comes... A, oh, nearly a clone coming out from Lara there, but the Ring of Peace is doing a great job. And once again, in comes Lara. I'm, I've been so impressed with Lara over this entire series on the side of Speedrun, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Lyra has been playing really, really well, and Lyra is uh, is one of the the stronger forces of speedrun as well when it comes to the healing. Some would maybe argue that he is their best healer. Not only does he play a good druid, he can also opt into other classes such as the monk, for example. But druid is right now a really strong healer, and and I really like that they keep going for it. It's also very strong offensively on flag maps. It can go into stealth. You have your cyclone, and and you are quite tank as well. But 
but Keely, he, he managed to get back to the base here, and I love my dog is under a lot of pressure here. He has popped his Incar, and he still has a, a survival instinct and, and two regions left, so he should be fine at least for the next minute or so. And uh, I mean, right now, Ehus are ahead of the race. Keely, every cooldown, I love my dog, zero. Yeah, you might say that, but Killy seems to burn through those cooldowns so, so fast when Revzi and Customer Support connect onto him. I love my dog just currently fending off the side of E-Heroes as they get ported outside once again. Ace going back up to his squadron, and you can see the, the battalion of E-Heroes players walking the long road up to get to I love my dog. He's getting income back very soon. He's got Barks in, but he doesn't have Trinkets. So if Raz can connect to him with a big kidney shot, then maybe they could score a victory very soon. Killy's just kiting around the center. Can you tell us why they do this, Eddie, as a professional tank player yourself? I mean, uh, you need to use the map to your strength, uh, especially as a Guardian also. You need to, if all the enemies are in your base, just run out to the Leaf House. When they are chasing you out to the bay, out to the Leaf House, you run back in. So you need to constantly be moving. But the hard part for a Guardian is here when they hit six decks. At six decks, the, 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 the speed from either forms, and here we say Cat form, Treble form, or even Shoal Sape, is, is it turned into zero. And, and great combo here for from oh. Refsi here, killing the Paladin It's gone, yeah, and customer support as well coming. Liras here, Killy is bound to die here. No way he survives. Killy Bear doing everything they can. Customer support, Lera and Revs taking a bunch of damage. I love my dog currently sat in this fear. Are they still going to be able to cap? It looks as though they are. It hasn't quite gone dropped out. No, they do. Speedrun wow. take the first cap. Two minutes left on this map here. Speedrun with a 1-0 one one lead against E-Heroes on Twin Peaks. Map number three in this best of five grand finals. What a fantastic setup on the side of Speedrun there. You saw Revs coming in and Dr. Muhammad just got absolutely melted. I yeah, that wasn't even sack actually. I thought he sacked the tank and just died to sack, but it just seems that the Convoke just all propped on top of Doc Mahowin, unfortunately. But, yeah, he uh, had bubble. He had yeah, that's just a bit unlucky there. To be honest. I mean, so close to the map ending as well. I thought this map would actually turn out into a draw. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, I agree with that. I thought the draw was was on the table as well, but honestly, I mean, MVP performance from Refsy here. The, I mean, of course, also maybe a bit lucky that that the convoke hit that hard on both of the the players. But I mean, Refsy, this is what you do as a boomy when you're on these flag maps and you need to just do big, consistent burst damage. You just go full mastery, and he had the circle as well, which solidified the kill. Yeah, this puts the pressure onto E Heroes now. They have to get another flag capture. They do currently have Speedrun's flag on the Killy Bear here. That is that is gonna be so close. And we do see obviously I love my dog and Lerolol here. And I also believe we actually have Decadine inside there as well. Unless they've uh, ported back out, I don't believe so. Decadine is in there as well. So Killy Bear moving over the map. This is a this is a good position for Speedrun to be in. I mean, it's uh, they couldn't ask for a better position, and 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 honestly, uh, I mean, I think Revsi is gonna go down and buy a lottery ticket here with with how many crits he got with that Kavok still thinking back at it. That uh, I mean, it, killing two players with one spell is not something you see every day. And and as we enter here, the first, the last three seconds, two, one, speed run up two one against E Heroes. What I thought. Yeah, it was something that we did consider. Speedrun on this Twin Peaks is very, very effective. We do have E-Heroes now with the next map pick. And taking a look at the damage here, Boomchin currently looking 2.8 million there. Where is Revzi currently? Revzi is, is, is not even appearing on the... He's not even appearing on the damage three, done. But I think Boomchin yeah. is main, he's mainly playing for like the, the dot damage, whereas Revzi's going for like the, the big star surge convoke one taps which seems much more effective on these FC maps. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Now, one thing I do want to kind of, uh, one thing I do want to point at is we spoke previously about the Horde and the Alliance Galu and the various different uh, sort of like areas that they have. The fact that the E-Heroes there had the Horde side of the map, which is generally something that is favored amongst the RBG community, something that they generally prefer to have. And the fact that Speedrun were able to actually you know, they, they were able to get the win here, even though they didn't have the Horde side. Um, you know, just put in perspective how that impressive is for them. Uh, 
I mean, considering the way Ehero is played, it, it didn't they didn't really play into the map at all, so I don't think it really changed anything. If uh, Wallerix, I think he was on D a lot of the time, or sometimes he was offensive, but he wasn't really getting these portals down into the board. He wasn't pulling them out of the map like Decadine was. Even even on defense for uh, Lions, Decadine was porting them outside of the room, so they had to run up around the stairs again, but uh, I don't really notice any memorable ports from Wallerix that game. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Uh, definitely nothing uh, spectacular f from him when it comes to that part. And and, and honestly, I mean, <laughs> I, I felt like the heroes were going for, let's just kite. We have a rogue in D and a rogue in O. Let's just keep kiting like evidence with the rogue. But you can't replicate evidence if you're not evidence. This is a one-man army in itself. So it, trying to take some lessons from him, but hmm, I mean, I'm only excited for the next game. What is Eros going to pick? Silver Shot Mines? They haven't picked Silver Shard Mines. They okay. haven't picked Temple either. Mm. E Heroes have gone for Arathi Basin. We have Arathi Basin map four in this best of five grand final. Speed run up two points to one. Obviously, speed run, if they win this one, they win the grand final, they win the entire tournament. E Heroes, this is their chance to come back. Gelu, how do you feel about the Arathi Basin pick here? Yeah, I mean, they, as I keep, I feel like I've said this so many times today, but they have very, very good rogues and very, very good boomkins. You can uh, break off and do excellent things. It's it's sort of, you can see it on the Eye of the Storm games where they're just constantly ninjuring. That's just amplified on Arathi Basin, so I think they'll be great. Very interesting. Excited to see this one. Now, if, it, if we end up in a world, Eddie, where E Heroes take this and we go to a game five. Speedrun will then have map pick for game number five, which is obviously the big game that they want to see. If you are speedrun going into, if, if you end up losing this, what would you, what would you, I mean, they're probably already sort of like planning for this, or they, they may, they, there may be somebody that is thinking, what map do we pick for game number five? If that happens, what, what do you pick for them? Because obviously there's no battle for Gilneas, there's no Warsong Gulch, there's no, you know, no Twin Peaks, no Rathi Basin. You've got Silver Shard Mines, you've got Temple. You know, you've got Eye of the Storm. What are you picking out of those? Now that you mentioned Eye of the Storm, I actually... I mean, they took the game from Eos Eye of the Storm, but I still feel like their their, their Kogmogo game also had a, a really, really great showcase of how well they played together. But, I mean, Eos managed to clutch it out, but for me, Speedrun dropped the ball on that Kogmogo. So I hope they go for Kogmogo again and redeem themselves. But I mean, with the mentioning of Arthur Storm, I'm actually, I'm not sure, Kix. I'm not sure because Eros lost Arthur Storm to them. So, yeah. I mean, the power of Dean. Exactly. We don't know We don't know how it's going to go. Um, E-Heroes e may end up losing a Rathi Basin. This could be a bad choice for them. We could see Speedrun taking it 3-1 here in the finals against E-Heroes. Only time will tell. They are 2-1 up. That Twin Peaks uh, was relatively close, though, Galu. I mean... Even though we did see, you know, the difference between Killy Bear's survivability versus uh, I Love My Dog, it was it was night and day. I Love My Dog was just taking everything that was being thrown at them, whereas Killy Bear was, you know, revs and customer support were there, and then immediately Killy Bear's at ten percent health without even, you know, w without even realizing it. Is was the offense obviously once again, or obviously that that choice of customer support uh, playing Vendetta on that rogue was was that the the big telling point there for Twin uh, for Twin Peaks? Um, I think it's also the Boomkin gameplay because the it, it doesn't seem like the Boomkins on E Heroes are playing like the mastery build, so they can't they don't do that much damage, you know. Like they they keep having these setups, you know, the full kidney going onto the tank of I Love My Dog, but the damage just wasn't there because they're just rotting him down with dots. And his star surges are hitting like thirteen k max or something, and that's that's like on a good day. Because if you have full mastery, you're getting like twenties plus. And that's that's about stacks. So, uh... but I mean, the, the vendetta is really good as well. Every time this guy pulled vendetta, like the tank just dies, and the the healing reduction is so nice too. True, true, very true. Now, taking a look here, this is game number four. Speedrun up two points to one against E Heroes. If Speedrun win this, they take the grand finals. Are E Heroes going to be able to take this and bring us back to a game number five? 
chat. Let us know who's going to win. There's a speedrun taking it 3-1 or E-Heroes taking us to a game five. Let's take a look at these compositions. We've got the double rogue coming out, obviously, from E-Heroes. And we do actually see Revs going onto that Guardian Druid for speedrun. Speedrun opting once again for the triple melee cleave. Eddie, how do you feel this is going to go? I mean, my first eyes are onto Warwick. He's going for Destro. And uh, that's an Autodox. This is the first Destro Warlock we see in the whole tournament coming out in the crucial game as well. And and look at this fight on LM here. We're gonna have Dean the and the Demidar and, and Elune. And they wanna knock people off here. And and the Warwick here, I mean, this is gonna be a great 2v3 to watch, but oof. Oh nah, wow. Wow, Revsy. Revsy just got the Tycoon off on the Klonkula, but this will actually spell the cap for Kili. Wow, they did it again. They did it again. This was just what happened in the game against uh, with Carl tanking against Big Burst the, the The bad clone in... in, in the, I mean, sorry. The, the bad clone into cap. Revsy thinks he can spin out. The late bomb. And who? Oh, I mean, honestly, Ehero is pulling ahead. Yeah, Ehero yeah, is pulling ahead very really fast. More time to pull ahead. One minute 20 in, and they've already got one base up. I'm just wondering how this is going at Lumber Mill. Bangman trying to peel as much as he can. Customer sub drops the bomb, though. The D&D goes down. Bangman tries to run into the bomb, gets kidneyed. Able to get the grip, though. But I'm not sure if he has reinforcements to keep stopping this. Keeping himself up with Death Strikes as much as he can. I don't think he can keep up much longer. See you later. See you later, Bangman. It looks as though they are going to be taking Lumberville here at speed run. So we're looking at two bases apiece. Can they keep these defended? Key point, though, E-Heroes did take mines first. So that means that they are going to be getting those points sooner over speedrun they're going to get a small points advantage here now all eyes are going to turn on two different things a blacksmith how is blacksmith going to go between these two teams and b just how effective are these two rogues going to be marauding around the map we actually do see decadine heading over to stables now so decadine currently looking at seeing if they can take stables potentially cause a little bit of pressure across the map we're going to have to wait and see but we are poised for an incredible game between these two eddie yeah, we are, and and also just let me let me just set up a, a little scenario here. If I told you that Elune, Demidar, and Dean would beat Warwick, let me say again, Warwick, Mackie, and Becky in a three v three at LM, would you say they did it? No, but they did, and honestly, it's a great, great play. I mean, it just showcases how great Demidar and Dean are working together. They are always grip knocking. They are always playing around, sending people off the off off the bases and send them flying away. So, I mean, honestly, great, 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 great gameplay from them. But now this is a BS fight, and and we have the distro lock. Can can he do damage here? I hope so. I mean, every time I play Destro in BGs, I can't get a cast off, but maybe Wallery can do it a bit better than I can. Wallery is, he's not even here right now, he's, he's just uh, probably trying to get into the fight. Zot running up to BS, Solar Bing peeling off, maybe trying to get a ninja on Lumber Mill or Stables, just wants to put bang pressure bang. on many oh. bases as he can. Well, the bang has never going to cap that, they know, they know about the spin, there's no way. I mean, we say that, but we have seen teams forget about it in this tournament. So, so maybe there were a chance, but no, I agree. And on this BS fight, it, it would be completely illegal if any of them managed to get a cap. Oh, and look, we have a two v two here. The great sap on Dean, but yeah, customer supporters here. Yeah. yeah, great. That was so close as well. If that smoke bomb would have gone off any sooner, then we may have had a very, very different outcome. But we do see Decadine here. Now, Decadine, we know just how good Decadine can be, but we also have I Love My Dog coming up here as well. So it will be a three on two. And it looks as though on the side of E-Heroes, they are starting to abandon that. They're making sure that they are looking relatively comfortable. They don't want to lose anything too much. Bangman trying to take it as well. Income Sublex to interrupt that one. And as we currently stand here, Galu, who would you give the advantage over to? We do see the small points, uh, small points advantage over to E Heroes, but is there, you know, taking a look at what we're seeing, sort of rotations wise, is 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 it more even than we think? Uh, yeah, I mean the the, the team fight in mid just it looks like it's probably going to swing over to speed run at some point because the E Heroes aren't really trying to win it; they're trying to stall it out. But right now, speed run going for the stables ninja raz is floating very very close wallerix is open onto raz coming back to peel instantaneously the convoke comes out from i love my dog wallerix able to just walk 
Flesh draw through it with a sack pet on his Void Walker, not getting completely totaled this time by the Convoke, so that's a really good. But I, I, at the same time, Raz is still going a little bit low here. They're trying to finish off I Love My Dog. Mackie's running back. And they've had to pull quite a lot of players back to deal with this. Yeah, and uh, honestly, first of all, great reactions from, from Warwick using both the pet sack, his wall, and the flesh crest, as, as you mentioned, literally topping himself to full. Normally, when you see a rogue and a, and a combo going off, you, you expect death, but, but Warwick kept his cool and, 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 and played it, calculated. However, as you said, with the rotation out from Mackie, this exposes Spears quite a bit. Two men healing here, only Dr. Mohammed and Sot. And now look at Raz and Solar being going for Dean again here. They just want to kill him. Yeah, they just go for the kill. Why try to CC him if you can just put him on the graveyard? And with this, this is going to be a three cap for E-Heroes. Yeah, Elune is coming in. That's the convoke you need. <laughs> but Elune. Yeah, that's Elune's coming in. Is customer support going to be able to stop this cap? Oh. Yes, they are. That was so close. Elune absolutely clutch coming up there, stopping Raz. Honestly, if Elune wasn't there and Raz was able to get up, I think we'd have had a very, very different story on our hands and E-Heroes would have three capped. Yeah, customer support is getting there right in time, unfortunately, for E-Heroes. That looked like a really, really good pull on that base of the stun convoke. Uh, maybe... If did Rance have Smoke Bomb available, perhaps? I can't exactly see it right here, but that could have scored the win if they noticed that earlier. Bangman now trying to get some damage off on Blacksmith, but I don't think this Blacksmith fight is ever going to achieve anything. No one is really putting all their resources into the fight. Both teams are just kind of trying to go for the ninjas, so this is just uh, stalling out the game for what it's worth. Yeah, interesting to note as well, we haven't seen any action on the side of mine either. Feels as though Speedrun have almost given up mine entirely because we haven't seen any inks. They've they've even gone to stables. Killy is just sat down there, just relaxing. If I was Killy, I'd be feeling I'd be feeling so annoying right now. I'd be feel, I'd be so annoyed. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, but it's also maybe he's also happy because he, he was in the two losses right on tank and the one victory they had, Kili was not in the game. So maybe he's happy that the pressure is not on him right now. At least I would feel like that if I was such a crucial role in the game. But looking here, this go here, both Lera and Revsi trying to ninja, but I mean, it's completely neutralized here by Willix and, and Solovink, and and also, just to, to Gelo's point, did, did, did uh, Raz have bomb? I'm pretty sure Raz has bomb, because uh, when he held the Warwick, he didn't use it, and then he went straight to LM afterwards, so I think it was uh, available, but I assume that he didn't knew that customer was on the way as well. He was too focused on stopping Elune, and, and honestly, Elune is playing adaptation. It's probably because of the, the, the 3v3 at Elim, so he has adaptation for each knock they, they, they're gonna have um, from Eheros, but but Elune, he should just have zapped him, got the adapt, and then went for the bomb. I completely agree, Gallo, because that bomb would have spelled the base. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly what I thought, but they're going here once again, Willex and Raz at Lumbermill. Willex goes for the cap, Raz pops the bomb, Customer Support goes in with the blind from stealth. Raz searching as hard as he can, trying to find him. Not even close to where Raz is, gets the sap off. They, oh, they just cross each other there, but luckily no one sees each other. Willex gonna go into another sap, I suppose, and Eloon right back here gets put into combat. No, he doesn't get a combat, there's the sap. I, maybe his adaptation, maybe he's not swapped out of the adaptation, he's trinketed the sap now. And that's uh, no trinket from the monk, but at, at Ma Blacksmith, Dr. Muhammad's died and Zot has died. So this is spelling really big trouble for E-Heroes. Maybe they might actually lose BS. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Muhammad is back up now. Zot back up in 15 seconds. Blizzo taking a bunch of damage. Die by the sword has been used as well. If they can take Blizzo down, this could be a real, real big turning point for speedrun. And Blizzo does go down. So does Mackie as well. We lose Mackie here. Bangman doing what he can to stay alive. Uh, a speedrun going to be able to turn this. A speedrun going to be able to turn it and take Blacksmith. Three cap here and potentially take the lead on points here in game number four of this best of five grand final. Willix is here to spin, great adaptation, moving away from Ilim, down to spin, and now Kili is here as well. Oof, beautiful roar by Kili. He's gonna pop the Incarn if he's ever in trouble. He has his trinket as well. He's just gonna spin this until the, the at least two healers are here. But but as you said, with the death of, of Dr. Mohammed and, and Sot, I, I thought it would spell trouble for, for E-Heroes here at, at BS. 
Especially, it looked like maybe they, they tried to, to gape over too much, both attacking LM and this one. We have to remember, they are ahead, so so they don't have to get another base to, to win this game. But, I mean, it looks like it's stabilized here. Oh, Raz going for a cheeky cap here as the rest of Speedrun are forced away. He got just gets it! Oh, wow, man, illegal gameplay every time. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get can we get a flag on the field, please? Because that was that was a that was horrific how he was able to get that one off. And this is going to give E Heroes even more of an advantage, unless of course Speedrun can do something about this. They do have Doctor Muhammad and Mackie down once again. They're going for Zot. They're going to see if they can get Zot down. If they can get Zot down, and they do, this is something that they could potentially once they could potentially defend this. Killy Bear also dropping. So Speedrun, these team fights are working in their favor, but. Are they going to be able to keep people off them so that they could potentially turn this blacksmith in their favor? This is going back and forth. We do see Blizzo there as well. Bangman going down. Blizzo's now going to be the target, blowing that up. Leralol is over here. They could potentially turn this. Raz coming in to try and stop it. I love my dog doing what they can to stop that as well. Raz trying their hardest. There's the big fear. It immediately gets taken off. Leralol coming in as well. They are trying so hard to turn this in their favor. Are they going to be able to do it? Because Raz is just being the biggest nuisance. But it is five against one. If Raz can defend this, it would be incredible. It has gone over onto the side of E-Heroes. They are getting points from this. Raz is playing out of his skin. Five versus one. And he is able to deny Speedrun the blacksmith cap. That is incredible. Yeah, Hiloon now going back up to Lumber Mill as no one was defending it. Completely ghosted as they try to put all of their resources into the blacksmith. It looks like Raz, noticing that, has peeled off as well. He's going to keep trying to ninja as much as he can, but there is pressure on the gold mine now. Willex there, customer support, trying to cap it with Revs and Decadine. Ninja capping Warlock. Can he get anything done? Fear onto Killy. Solar Beam comes over with a big Convoke, chasing everybody off. And it looks like they might recover at gold mine because of that. And for each ticking point now, E-Heroes is securing this victory. They just need to hold out for at least two minutes and then they win even with two bases, if I'm doing my math correctly. And honestly, this just spells the, the, the fifth game of this series. Now, it's not com completely over yet. There is still a lot of play potential here on speedrun. But as we see E-Heroes right now, they, they are they're trying to keep be aware, right? They have, they have shot here with Mackie. Dr. Mohammed is floating towards mines. Dr. Mohammed just used his trinket as well, but I'm sure he would be fine down there. So, I mean, this this looks like a victory for E-Heroes, honestly. 2-2. Two, two. You calling it already? You think this is the point? I think this is it. Yeah, um, I, I can't see how they can come back from this speedrun. I think the... I mean... <laughs> Yeah, the game was stalled so long, so when you finally get the third base, they are usually the morale just drops to zero and everyone is like, oh, a big sigh, you know, in the team, because that was the thing that should not happen. Yeah. Yeah, that we see them the heading over here. A weird fight going on on the road here. Sublex, Dr. Mohammed, Demidar and Solo being just going at it as they try and uh, take control of the roads. Not allowing the horses from stables to connect to blacksmith, I suppose. I don't really see any other reason for this. Yeah, this is this is unfortunate. Honestly, that play by Raz to not only take the flag at blacksmith when speedrun seemed to step forward a little bit too far. I'm not sure whether they just, you know, they just didn't spin their cameras around. I'm not entirely sure what happened there, but also the ability for Raz to keep speedrun from capping it as well, making sure that there was, you know, just constant interrupts going out. Honestly, that that has saved this map for E Heroes because if Raz hadn't have been there and Speedrun would have taken Blacksmith, then honestly, I think the roles would have been completely re reversed and we would have seen Speedrun taking this grand final 3 1. But as it currently stands, it looks as though we are going to be going and Zot is currently over here taking the farm here. It looks as though it has gone over to E Heroes. This is going to spell the end for speedrun it is going to be two all we're going to go to the final game five in this best of five series between e-heroes and speedrun on method mayhem and honestly there's very little to separate these two teams eddie 
No, there's not. And I mean, what more can you ask for if you have the two best teams in Europe and, and they are competing? You wanted to go to five games. So I hope that our viewers as well are happy, even though we are pushing to, I think it's 1 a.m. for most here, Central European time at least. And I mean, honestly, Redemption game from from Brass. He hasn't been looking too hot, honestly. He also was one of the players who who lost minds in in the in in the in the Gilneas game. Sorry. So so honestly, great great comeback from him. Great redemption because I think that's something he needed at least for for his own mental. Yeah, very very true. And this will set up speedrun obviously to pick the final map. And as we mentioned before, Eddie, Eye of the Storm is is potentially a choice that they could take here. Eye of the Storm, they did take off uh, heroes in the previous series, and uh, they looked relatively comfortable whilst they were doing it. But the pressure is now on both of these teams because once again we are going to that final game. This is it. Whoever wins this game wins the entire tournament. It is open for both E-Heroes and Speedrun. Gelu, that Arathi Basin, relatively close for a fair period of it, but Raz making the difference when it counted. Yeah, the opener as well, if you remember that long ago, about 20 minutes ago, it was uh, so in E-Heroes' favor as well. They just managed to cap that base just out of the gates pretty much. Maybe like one minute in, they just had two bases compared to the Speedrun's one, and that gave them quite a bit of points lead as well, considering the blacksmith just never got tapped until about 10 minutes in. Yeah, and uh, and also, not only that, the great play at Mines, but also a great showing from Speedrun on Elim, winning the 3v3 against Warwick, Smacky and and, and, and Deki. And uh, those are three players, uh, I think most would argue that if they were in the 3v3, they would definitely take it. But I mean, Elune and, and Dean and Demi really bring out the A game. Sadly, it, it didn't uh, turn into a victory, but they were one point up already. So it's 2-2 two, two now. They have the map advantage now uh, on which one, which one they want to pick. So. I mean, I'm very excited for the next one <laughs> and the final yeah. game. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, take a look at what we do have here. Obviously, two all game five, best of five series. What are the nerves going to be like for these two teams, Galu? Uh, well, I mean, best of five. There's there's so much ego in RBGs that I'm sure this matters a lot to every player. They're just thinking, God, it's going to be months of getting flamed either way. So it's, this matters quite a bit for both teams, just for bragging rights alone. Um, it's also getting kind of late as well, so maybe they're getting quite tired. Some of these teams have been playing all day as well. The amount of games have been played by Speedrun. They've played, what, three series or something? Just absolutely insane amounts. So they must be getting they're pretty fatigued at this point, but uh, the, the gameplay is still on point. Yeah, this is their fourth series. They obviously had the first game against German Academy. They then faced off against E-Heroes in the upper bracket, faced German Academy once again in the lower bracket, and now they're back up against E-Heroes in the grand final. And they also, don't forget, they played three games against E-Heroes as well, so they've probably played, they've played more games today than any other team. And they're up against E-Heroes, one of the favorites before we headed into this tournament. We mentioned, you know, Eye of the Storm. There's also Temple that's available for them, Eddie. This is this is kind of you know this is make or break for both of these teams. They are going to want to uh, they're going to want to really make sure that that they are making the right choice here. And this goes back to something that Gallo mentioned as well yesterday: is do you play against your you know do you play against your opposition's weakness or do you play or do you play to your strengths? And uh, that's the decision that is currently facing speedrun here on this map choice. If I was speedrun right now. I would play to my strength and their weakness, which was my victory on Eye of the Storm. So, I assume they're going to take Eye of the Storm, even though they are the Temple team for me. Uh, uh, I think it's going to be as Eye of the Storm. And it's simply just due to the fact that they, they took a game earlier and they have already now seen the double rogue from E-Heroes. They know what they can bring now. So, they are probably even more comfortable going into Eye of the Storm because I'm sure the first Eye of the Storm, when they saw double rogue, they were like, ooh, what is, what's coming now? Is this a double duel ink or something like some secret dark tech E-Heroes had made overnight, you know? So, so I think that uh, Eye of the Storm is, is my bet. It's a good bet. Because map number five is Eye of the Storm. 
So this is something that obviously speedrun feel confident on. They took the map pick off. Uh, they took the map off of E Heroes in the previous series that they did face off against each other. That being said, Galu, E Heroes have had success on Eye of the Storm so far during this tournament. So uh, again, whilst this is uh, a strength of speedrun, it's definitely not something that E Heroes are unfamiliar with. Yeah, I mean, they were great with the ninjas with the double rogue composition. If they can pull that off again, I think it could go to E-Heroes. As long as they either deal with the Nox appropriately or just do the Nox as well as uh, Speedrun do. Yeah, it, that's. I think that's the biggest thing is... Uh... And we, we talk about the, the knocks and it is kind of one of those moments where it's like, okay, you've knocked somebody in the middle. What does it actually mean? But speedrun, perfect example of just how effective it was. They were able to get the three-man knock and then all of a sudden you turn that pressure on. You pick up the flag and you're ahead in points. You do it again. You're even further ahead in points, also whilst defending your own bases. Now, it wasn't exactly easy. They really had to fight for those bases, but they pulled it off. And the moment that happened... E heroes kind of almost felt like they were running out of ideas. They weren't sure exactly where they wanted to go from that, and it is a perfect map. I think it's a perfect uh, setup for for this final map here for these two teams, Eddie. Yeah, it is. And uh, honestly, I mean, what more do we want from a game five? An exciting map, exciting gameplay, and and I'm sure they are sweating now. Twenty sweaty guys really want to win this also not just for the breaking rights as Scalo mentioned because breaking rights is <laughs> i think that's everything for rpg really we are a community there's not much competitive uh, play besides this amazing method mayhem so again a big shout out to method thank you for doing all this and i hope there will be more there and there probably will so i mean this is great, right? And and also the cash price. I'm sure some of these teams would like to have a, a bit extra money. Maybe they can get the, the tuna olive pizza that, that Galo likes, right? So, I mean, everything is in store for us. You missed out the most egregious part, which is the pineapple. Oh, yeah, the pineapple. Sorry. Sorry, Galo. I, I, yeah. Not to insult you. <laughs> and the barbecue base. <laughs> what? And a barbecue. Wait, hang on. Tuna barbecue pineapple. Oh. I mean, there's only one Gale, right? So, I mean, <laughs> we love him. You boys are missing out, man. <laughs> oh, Ugh. Ugh. Barbecue che Yeah, um... That's Triple a, that's, pizza, dude? That's, <laughs> that's, that's... Yeah, that's, that is a... That's a step too far. But we are currently waiting on, bo or on both of the teams to get into Eye of the Storm here as we set up the final game of Method Mayhem once again. It is E Heroes and Speedrun to all in this best of five. It all comes down to this Eye of the Storm. And a fitting name for what has happened over this tournament. Obviously, we have seen E Heroes consistently in the upper bracket the entire time. We did see Speedrun take the first map of them with Eye of the Storm in the upper bracket semi final. However, E Heroes were the one that sent Speedrun down to the lower brackets and they would take on German Academy, which they won pretty convincingly uh, to excuse me, pretty convincingly, 2-0. Uh, so we're actually set up for a very, very interesting uh, final here. And you've mentioned uh, the ego eddy of, uh, you know, RBGs and kind of like the history and everything that goes along with these. How much would it mean for Speedrun to take the grand final against E-Heroes, considering E-Heroes beat them earlier on in the tournament? It would mean everything. Literally everything. Not just the Brecken rides, but... The, the Discord, the forums, they, they're gonna explode. Speedrun will suddenly be regarded as, as the best team in Europe. Like, we can officially call them the best team in Europe. There, it's not many changes we get uh, to say that Eheros has, has fallen from grace, right? So, I mean, I'm, uh, for the sake of Speedrun, I hope they do it. But I'm also afraid that they're going to get insane ego. But I mean, that's just how it is, man. They, they're allowed to have ego if they win, right? Of course. So, yeah, I mean, so. I feel like if E Heroes win, just nothing happens, you know? But if yeah. Speedrun win, then it just explodes and it's it's not going to be a good time for anyone. <laughs> yeah, it, it is one of those moments. E, e Heroes win and it's kind of expected. It's like, okay, E Heroes, they've won. They're one of the best teams in the world. Speedrun win, they take this map, uh, they take this victory in the grand final. 
all of a sudden that opens you know not only does it open up for for more speed run activity in the future you know they got a lit they have a little bit more confidence in themselves you know they start to step forward into more of these tournaments but also e heroes you know they start to question themselves you know could we have done anything different are we starting to you know are we starting to to lose our to lose our fire are we starting to to lose all of all of what made us special and there's there's a lot to play for here not only do we have the prize pool there's also 10 million gold from dawn as well exclamation point dawn in the chat check that out because that's going to be really really useful for them especially with 9.2 around the corner as well i think we're all excited about 9.2 blizzard give us a release date please you know just just message me just message me at, at kexman on twitter blizzard just message me at kexman on twitter tell me the release date i'll let everybody know it'll be fine speaking of release date when the when is this game gonna start these men talking like the most crazy strats or something well that could be happening who knows eye of the storm we could be seeing some really crazy compositions maybe they decide to go triple warlock and not just throwing people off the middle they're gonna throw people off the sides they're gonna throw people off their own bases it'll be beautiful who knows who knows one of the teams exactly exactly we are getting everything set up here but going into going into these grand finals and and taking a look i kind of want to touch upon this as well uh, we, we've seen so many teams across here you know we've seen german heroes we've seen german wow. academy We've seen Big Burst of it, Ghosting Farm, Shame, Known Unknown, E Heroes, Speedrun, some fantastic names. And there was qualifiers before this as well. And I want to give a massive, massive shout out to not only Method, but everybody that is out there working on these community tournaments, whether it is RBGs, whether it is 3v3s, whether it is, you know, a Mythic Plus, whether it's raiding, anything along those sort of lines this this is what keeps the community alive this is what keeps people you know people in the chat here this this is a game that we all love this is a game that we all enjoy playing so you know every single person that is working at creating these uh, creating these tournaments keeping the community involved outside of the official tournaments you know realistically you are what is keeping uh, at this point in time world of warcraft afloat doing a great job and you know i think everybody in chat can agree with me and I'm, I'm pretty sure you know both of you agree with me here where i say you know these community tournaments are are always are always great fun whether you know we're casting whether we're playing in them whether we're just watching like the people in in chat it, it is always an absolute pleasure and and i absolutely love what the community means for this game yeah, it, the community is everything for World of Warcraft, especially when it comes to RPG. And again, a big shout out to you, you out there. We wouldn't have done this without you. Yeah, also you, Gelo, because nice. you are on cast, so we couldn't have done it without you either. But especially you in chat, you have who have tuned in for two days straight, eight hours each day if of haven't pure... slept yet. Have you slept? I mean, me no, neither. They haven't slept. Tuned in for two days straight, 48 hours, watching RPG. They watch the rerun. And they watched it again, and then they're here again. <laughs> so a big shout out and a big thank you to you behind the scene. Yes, everybody behind the scenes production. They have done an incredible job making sure that everything is A, looking good. They're sorting out all the add-ons as well, making sure that you are getting the best viewing experience that you possibly can have. And I think it culminates here, Eye of the Storm one of the best looking maps uh in all of in in all of well when it comes to battlegrounds even though it is what fifth 15 14 years old now i think i have to stop Woo. yeah i think you're right about that when when did the uh, burning crusade come was that uh, I think. in seven yeah oh yeah, yeah 2007 i feel old thank you kicks <laughs> 2007 yeah that is uh yeah, that, that was a long time ago. So yeah, it's, uh, it's it's been around a while, but it still looks that good. And we want to make sure that these teams are fully prepared as well. We don't want any of these teams coming in if they are missing something important or they haven't quite made a change that they want to make. So we do want to make sure that we are giving you the best in this Method Mayhem Battleground Showdown. It is the grand final and we are poised to maps a piece. It's winner take all, Eddie. This is the situation every single tournament wants to be in when you get to the grand final. You want to see the best of the best, and Speedrun and E-Heroes have absolutely done that for us. 
Yeah, they have definitely delivered throughout the whole tournament. Great gameplay from, from them, but also to all the other teams who were there, as you mentioned before, German Academy, even known unknown, Toxic Mist. There's a lot of new players that I have caught an eye on to Iron, Blue Iron as well from from from, from known and known the DK. Like there's so many people coming into the team and so many new faces as well, because we have to remember many from E Heroes they have been on this team for I mean Probably what soon? I mean, ten years for some of them, right? So, so it's good that we get some fresh faces into the team. We can also just mention uh, German heroes, even though they got clapped out of the tournament. They are also kind of young players, especially Sydney. I think he's not more than twenty years old. So, it, it's really good that all these new young players they they, they come into World of Warcraft and and, and bring us back to life, right? Because that's what we need. We need players if we want to keep going. You say 20 years old and immediately I feel ancient. Ah, I mean, I, I, I'm soon 30. Don't don't mention it. I'm over 30. Oh, oh okay, okay, I'm okay. Not, I feel good now. Thank you, Kicks. Like, I'm 32. So <laughs> you saying I'm nearly 30. It's like, I, I'm already past that. I'm. It's, it's, it's oh, horrific. I'm in. feeling... We're in, we're in. Eye of the Storm is here. The final map of Method Mayhem is here. E-Heroes speedrun. This is it, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between. The final battle between these two teams. Whoever wins this is the winner of the Battleground Showdown here for Method Mayhem. And I do want to point something out here. Look in the lower left. What do you see? See Killy going on Honda. Game Oof. five, grand final. There's always a surprise. He snaked into BM. Is that usual for hunters and BGs? Yeah, if he wants to defend, it's fine. Yeah. So yeah. I assume they they're gonna have Honda on defense. And Honda is also a good class to ink with, right? If he plays camouflage, he can defend. He can go stealth. He can go to the base. He can uh, he can then, especially if you ink like Mage Tower or, or Blood Elf Tower, you can use the explosive trap to to knock people away as well. So oh, hmm. he's got the worm pair as well that just burrows into the ground, and he can stop the cats, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. they have really thought about this. A great, great adaptation from E-Heroes. Oh, he's inking. As well. Yeah, he is. He's fully playing for the inks this game. They have a very ink based around uh, composition. Don't really have any of that melee cleave damage that Speedrunner bringing with the Warrior DK Ret. They've just gone full tactical objective gameplay on the bases. You know, we see Shaman dropping off there, the first person getting knocked off here on this final map. And there's always a, there's always a situation here, Eddie, where some teams actually, because they're in this situation where it is everything to play for, they end up playing not to lose, which actually ends up being a really negative thing for them. Yeah, and I actually think we have seen that a lot in this tournament, at least a lot of nerves from all the teams. We have seen teams losing bases where they could have spun. We have seen teams playing it very, very safe. Teams that usually ink on cooldown are not inking. They're simply playing it safe. But look at Revsi here. He He's in a in a, in a 1v2, though. I think he will be fine. He, he still has his trinket ink on for when um, Killy is going to try to put him into a trap. Or maybe he's going to... Oh, the Scare Beast! He, he tries to get the Scare Beast off. I like this new adaptation from the Honda. And look, Willix is just waiting. As soon as it hits, he's going to open. But again, Illum coming in now. Mm, maybe not ideal. Oh! Full trap on Revs. Full kidney on Illum. But he doesn't... He's not able to continue the CC chain onto Illum, unfortunately. So he just incaps it. And yeah, then, we yeah. saw the Baskin from, from Revsi and he's playing Bramble, so when he pops ah, Baskin, yeah. yeah, he's going to cleave on the flag. Great adaptation from Revsi, but Elune being here, E-Heroes, why are they not committing to mid then? Just put pressure onto Lera or Ace. Like, they're, they're two-man healing. Yeah, very, very interesting setup here. I think the 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 one the one thing I do want to point out is we do see Hunter here, and it's kind of one of the things that we've been talking about is, you know, why do we not see Hunters in these battlegrounds? Killy moving on to it, it's obviously a little bit of a curveball for Speedrun to have to deal with, but at the same time, there's, there's probably a world where Killy is actually feeling 
Killy hasn't played this Hunter at all this tournament and is going to have to get used to it. Been playing Druid the entire time and you still have to kind of warm up onto a certain specific type of playstyle. And looks so like we do have the Scare Beast coming in. Are they going to be able to turn it? Once again, not able to quite do it. We do see Wiz coming over here, potentially trying to help out on that. Raz coming over, stopping I Love My Dog Shaman, getting knocked off once again on the side of Speedrun. And Solar Bing also dropping down for E-Heroes. And this is just an interesting game all around seeing this Hunter coming in. And I don't know whether it is actually the right play. Uh, I mean, what do you think, Gelo? Do you think it's worth? Uh, it doesn't really seem to be doing anything. His, his main thing seems to be trying to scare Beast, but he just shifts it every time. I, I guess he has trap off the stuns if the if the Willix can't sap, so maybe he can trap off like a cheap shot or something. But uh, I don't know. It doesn't really seem to be doing too much that a, rest, that a Boomkin wouldn't do. No, I agree. And, and also just looking at the points, both teams completely equal. There was no effective speed cap at least uh, for for either side and and that is a speed cap is when you basically have a one point lead and uh, that can actually mean victory in these spawn games but here soplek is dropping demida is in his uh, in his necro form as well it seems he will be okay though but but with two dps dead here from from speedrun i mean i would like to see e heroes here maybe rotate both but look solar bank and willix are here why are they not rotating mid put some pressure into mid I'm sure that they can get at least one wipe with their lineup, but I guess they just want to steal a base. Yeah, very, very interesting setup here as well. Previously, we have seen speedrun. They have been the ones to take the great engage in the middle. They've been knocking people left and right, uh, you know, off the platform here. E heroes are actually kind of turning the tables a little bit and kind of saying, okay, you're going to do that. We're going to do the exact same to you. We've seen uh, Shaoman dropping off. We've seen Sublex being knocked off. It looks as though E heroes do currently have the edge in the middle. But at the same time, they've got this hunter who's moving up and it's not actually doing anything. And even though they are getting those kills over onto speedrun, as you mentioned there, Eddie, they're, they're not doing anything with it. They're not putting the pressure through and it just gives speedrun a chance to, to catch back up. Yeah, and especially with the kill they got onto Soplex in mid, it just meant that he rest at the correct base and managed to spin. We saw Keely, he he um, he stunned, re or the refugee got stunned and got knocked away with the explosive trap, so he couldn't bramble on top of the flag. But but uh, Soplex was there to spin, and now Mackie is dead. The Bangman is dead. I think they they flew off the mat, and and uh, if Keely dies here, I'm sure Soplex is gonna rotate into mid as well, putting even more pressure onto E heroes. Yeah, maybe Kitty can get a stealth off here while he gets away as long as his pets are out of combat, so he, I think he should be okay. E heroes, though, as you say, they're not really putting that much pressure onto mid when they get these kills. Seems like they're really, really hard committing to try and ninja these bases, but speedrun are just on the ball with that. They constantly have people floating every time, so they just aren't able to capitalize on any mistakes that speedrun are making because there just isn't any mistakes to capitalize on. Yeah, here comes Kelly stealthing through across the map, heading towards that Blood Elf Tower. We see I Love My Dog here causing more problems. Looks as though we do have three people come at... Sorry, yeah, three people on the defense here. Uh, Deca, sorry, two people on the defense. Decadine is here as well. Askarath, I Love My Dog and Decadine doing a great job at kind of keeping people locked up here. But we do see customer support here. Single defense against Killy and... Oh, hang on, take a... I was just seeing there was another person there that I couldn't quite see. It looks Solar Bing is currently engaged with... I'm trying to see who it is. It is Solar Bing against uh, Elam there. And we also see Lera here defending. And once again, Sublex down here in the middle. So this uh, Sublex has just rezzed up as well. E-Heroes, they're getting pressure across the map, but it's not meaning anything yet. It isn't meaning anything just yet, but eventually something has got to give, and I think it might be Colin, uh, Killy's life there. The Hunter does go down, but once again, doesn't really mean anything for Speedrun unless they can turn that attention to either mid or one of these bases. Look at this 2v2 here, Hadeen, and I love my dog going for a kill onto Asgarath. Asgarath should be quite safe. He can simply just dispel the dots and start lining the Warlock if he was ever in trouble. And and also, I was kind of wondering why we saw both Elun and Lyra rotate rotate over to Mage Tower, uh, to, uh, sorry, Blood of Tower to, to help 
um, to help sm uh, customer support. I felt like E-Heroes, when they see two enemy healers at one base, they, they just need to commit even harder for mid. I, I know it's easy to rotate back into middle, but each kill will, will mean a little more momentum. And, and honestly, that, that's uh, so important. And I mean, <laughs> we're in a stalemate. Ooh, and, and Chow Man fl flew off though, but still a stalemate. Yeah, I'm really wondering what's going to give this game. I I feel like surely a base will go at some point, but everything just seems so even on either side. There's, as you said earlier, there's no uh, speed cap that's happened. They both have equal points. It's going to come down to some one tiny misplay somewhere will just spell the game. And as soon as that happens, it just need to catalyze it. I'll have my dog trying to ink here, but once again, just answered by E-Heroes. The rest of E-Heroes just fighting in mid just railing down Elune. Elune, his mana is pretty fine. All the, everyone is just fine, and they're just trading kills, blow for blow, defending the bases, and but this is what happens when two very good teams face each other in either storm. Just everything has happened equally, and no one can really catalyze off anything. Yeah, yeah. and if I were to tell you two guys that E-Heroes were going to be 2-2 two -two against Speedrun in the grand final, completely equal on points, as the coming favor to the tournament, would you expect this? Hey, I called, oh. I called three two. Oh, you did. He did. He did call three two. He did indeed call three two on the side of E Heroes. But one thing that is interesting to note here is Speedrun have actually lost more players than E Heroes in this middle fight here. But as mentioned, it hasn't transitioned into any sort of pressure. We do see Killy over here with Lara once again trying to put pressure, but it's just not working and. As we mentioned at the start, Eddie, it does feel as though both of these teams are playing to not lose, which ends up in a situation where all it takes is one person to slip up, one person to accidentally press the wrong keybind or get caught out of position, and everything starts to tumble down for them. I mean, the next flag, the next cap, I'm pretty sure whoever gets the next advantage are going to win the game uh, to be completely honest i think everything comes down to the next move and the thing is i mean if you want to win you gotta make plays but when you make plays you also expose your own bases to get taken so it's such a double edged short for both teams they want to win but they don't want to lose either right and it all returns to the point you also mentioned are they playing not to lose yeah, exactly. And it's we're heading... all, here's a big rift going on here. Do they catch anyone with that? Doesn't seem like it. I think these rifts might spell the end of the game as well. If Decadine gets one of his uh, signature three man rifts, then that's just going to be it for Heroes. But Heroes seem to be playing around it very well this game. Previously, Zot was just gone permanently, but now yeah. he seems to be saving himself quite a bit. Yeah, doing a great job with that. And as mentioned, we're actually seeing speedrun. They're having the most amount of players knocked off the edge here. So, you know, very, very strange to see the tables turn on E-Hero's side. And once again, you know, we're currently looking even points, 830 points, 10 minutes into this. This is game number five in this best of five grand final here between E-Heroes and Speedrun. And honestly, this is exactly what we were expecting. These two teams completely evenly matched, neither team giving ground. But as we say that, Alum does die here in mid. Is this going to transition to even more pressure for E-Heroes onto Speedrun? We'll have to wait and see. It doesn't look as though they're going to be able to take much advantage of it. But Demidar does very nearly get knocked off, does manage to grip back on. So that was super close there. Warwick taking a bunch of damage here. Decadine doing what they can. We haven't seen Decadine doing any big knocks, but if Decadine does catch anybody in E-Heroes, we have seen him knock three people off at the same time. That could be the turning point that Speedrun are waiting for. Yeah, it can, but I feel like they have such a hard time setting up the knock here. Also, just glancing over E-Heroes trinkets. Nearly every trinket is available in mid here. At least they will be available for the next rift from Dean. So so that's also great. But here, wow, Sud is... Oh, the soul shape from Sub barely saving himself. Great mechanics for him, but Warwick, he managed to flew off here. But Sud saving himself here probably stabilizes mid. That was really important from him. Yeah, he uses the soul shape, but he also uses the grip to get back up as well. So on the next rift, he might actually pay the price for that. Hopefully, he has goblin jump available, or he will surely be going down. That could be <gasps> Killy! Dramatic, but Killy! At the same time, he just caps the base, casting us up in the full blind, and Willix and Killy, they've finally done it. 12 minutes in, they have got that base. 
and Maya's giving them the few points they needed to get ahead. And it's bad we didn't see what happened initially. Uh, the only thing we saw was customer support in a full blind with no trinket. And his team was on the way, but simply not too slow. And with this, E-Heroes pulling ahead of speedrun. E-Heroes, the probably defending champions of Europe. They want to claim this title again. They're not going to go away and, and give speedrun any chance to, to claim that title. Yeah. That was so, so close. Looking as though we're going to get a big port there from Decadine. Is it going to be enough to stop them from... Is it going to be enough that they can turn that back? It does look as though Ace is trying to capture the flag once again. Speedrun are currently behind on points, but that does not necessarily mean that this is over by any stretch of the imagination. We are seeing a small lead here for E-Heroes. Are they going to be able to keep that? Or are Speedrun going to be able to turn it back over? It looks as though E-Heroes are able to actually defend this, which is huge. If they can defend this at this point in the map, this could be it. It. This could be the end of speedrun here in Method Mayhem's E-Heroes could take the victory. We're going to have to wait and see because the longer this goes on, the longer the E-Heroes are able to defend this, the harder it's going to be for speedrun to come back into it. Yeah, so, Eddie, what would you do now? Would you defend the three bases or would you keep fighting in the middle like this? Or would you try and do both? I would probably just allocate one or two healers and one DPS to spin middle and then go hard for a base. But honestly, this looks rough for speedrun. And again, a big shout out to Kili here. Kili, the man who dropped both games from E-Heroes on the flag map. He was the most important role playing the tank. We all know how important it is to have a good tank. And and, and here, the comeback, securing the, the third base from E-Heroes, giving them a 100-point lead now. And... With each ticking time, this looks just like an EHO's victory. I'm sure Kili is very happy because he didn't perform great, but here, that's a comeback. But we see, we're seeing Zot down on the side of E Heroes, Askarath down as well, Bangman down here too. This could potentially be the turning point that Speedrun need because even though this is ticking up very, very quickly, it doesn't necessarily mean that this game is over. But if anything happens, Speedrun needs to make it happen right now. We do see they are going to be looking at getting this flag. So Decadence has, Decadan has picked up the flag. Looks as though they are currently trying to take Mage Tower over here. Boomchin down, Bangman down on the side of E Heroes. This game is not over. Speedrun can come back into this but they need to do something now they need to capture a base they need to capture this flag yeah i don't they're not going to get a lot of points for capping this flag see but if they keep on capping them repeatedly without getting stopped then could pull it back i'll have my dog trying to get the cap on this base it looks like he's he's still going he's still going sublex he's trying to defend it as well trying to stop them from stopping i love my dog but the ring of peace comes in from maki just at the right time that looked so so close there as well yeah i think it was the res rng they were able to res immediately there and then they were able to pick it up but e hero still losing players bangman going back down raz going back down once again this is getting super close but every single second that this is ticking e hero is getting closer and closer speedrun they may have left this too late they do have the flag they can currently cap it but once again is it too little too late for them here in the grand final of the method mayhem battleground showdown it definitely looks like it is too late even with this flag they won't even get close to the points of e-heroes and just a quick recap what happened at blood elf the the, the game winning play what happened was Kelly. i'm pretty sure he got the explosive trap the stun into explosive trap away and then willix managed to follow up after that and 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 sapping him out so Honestly, great coordination here from Willix and Kili, especially Kili forcing the trinket from, from Smokey. So, Kili, great redemption. And I mean, Kex, 50 points left. I think you need to hype this. I think you need to give E Heroes the proper salute. Oh, absolutely. This was a fantastic pick by Speedrun. We've seen Eye of the Storm in the previous series. They were able to take the map off E-Heroes, but E-Heroes coming back with the redemption as we tick down three bases, 17 minutes into the game, the final 10 points crossing over. Commiserations to Speedrun. They played an incredible series, but there it is, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. E Heroes, your Method Mayhem Battleground Showdown champions. And they did it on Eye of the Storm, one of Speedrun's best maps so far this entire weekend. Gelu, what a great performance from them. Yeah, that was really excellent from uh, Speedrun in particular, to be honest. I, I thought 
Everyone coming into this tournament did not think it would be this close. They thought E-Heaters would just sweep everything. They were the favorites by far, but uh, Speedrun coming up so, so close to defeating E-Heroes, and they're, they're really getting a run for their money. Yeah, and I think the most impressive thing there is that they, they fought until the very end of that Eye of the Storm. It could have been very, very easy for them to get tilted and just go, well, they've captured the third base, let's go. You know, this is over and done with. They did the exact opposite. They kept on fighting. They kept on pushing. And in the end, they pushed E-Heroes closer than E-Heroes would have wanted. It definitely did. I am sure E-Heroes was sweating a lot here in the last game, especially if we think about it, the last base, when did it get turned? I think around 1100 points. So a complete stalemate for over 10 minutes. Both teams just giving each other punches, but nothing really sticks to them. So, so for me, like, honestly, great game and I wanna just do a big shout out to, to Speedrun for, for showing up. A big shout out to the American and Australian players coming in as well. Some of them are playing at very weird time zones right now. I think it's probably day for them now, right? So 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 a big shout out to them for, for showing up and, and hearts to them in the chat. We we really love them. And then again, E Heroes. You proved yourselves again. The best of Europe. I mean, whew, take yeah, it away. Exactly. They, they prove themselves, but speedrun showing us that gods can bleed. And here we look at the brackets here. Speedrun pushing E-Heroes. It hasn't quite updated as of yet, but E-Heroes did win that final 3-2 against speedrun. And honestly, speedrun put on such a performance, and I would be really excited to see exactly what happens the next time we run this. Because honestly, if this happens again, I could see speedrun having E-Heroes number here, Galu. Yeah, for sure. But uh, you got to remember the E-Heroes are going to take this away as well. They're going to remember. They're going to practice up as much as they can. And uh, I, I think next game, next time they face each other, it will be very similar again. Yeah, exactly. Maybe even this time, uh, you know, a slight change. We did see a great performance, uh, obviously, on Warsaw Gulch and Twin Peaks. But we will be having an interview with some of the winning team. E-Heroes will be joining us shortly. We will be joined, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between. And I want to see some love in chat for the players that are joining us. We will be joined shortly by Raz, Killy, Maki, and Zot as well. So we're going to find out exactly how they feel. Not only the grand final went, but also the tournament as a whole. Before we get them in, Eddie, I just want to, you know, get a quick word from yourself. Eye of the Storm, a great pick from Speedrun, but how do you think they're going to feel now? Obviously, with Eye of the Storm being one of their best maps, being a, a map that they did win against the heroes and and falling short and, and and speaking of speaking of the players it looks as though they are currently joining us i'll, I'll ask the question afterwards um e heroes killy maki raz zot thank you for joining us here and congratulations on winning the method mayhem battleground showdown thank you thank you thank you thank you <laughs> no worries no worries. now uh, obviously first question that grand final all five games going up against speedrun speedrun it's fair to say pushed you folks really really hard how do you how does it feel winning that obviously after the the game number five that you had on eye of the store yeah well, yeah it was really close games um i think we made some mistakes early on but we came back we kept cool calm and collected but uh they're definitely a really good team we i think we just i think we made some crucial mistakes in the first game and we learned from it and we tried something new on the twin peaks it was really unlucky that we ended up losing that game but it happens um, but yeah, they're they're a pretty good team. But we we came we came up ahead. Also, I have a question. I don't know it, since Mackie took this one. I have a question for maybe maybe Shot can go into this or or Kili or yeah, sure. can, Shot can go into this. Yes. So Shot, we we saw Warwick not opting into these rift placements. We saw Dean really utilizing rifts. Your team coming into this tournament. How is the the Warlock play? Have you not been practicing practicing it as much as maybe Speedrun has? Because at least we saw. Uh, and now I'm I'm thinking Twin Peaks where you are basically swimming half the game. So, but uh, what's the idea behind? Behind this, it seems like your guys were relying more on your sheer skill than you can say standard RPG tactics. Yeah, we opted to not play Rift on this last Eye of the Storm just so we could go for more like singular grip knocks on the Ret and the Warrior and just make sure they're off so we can keep uh, not dying in mid so we can just say stay safe in mid. 
basically. Okay. And it's easier to just singular grip knock people than it is trying to play for rift every now and then. Hmm? That's our goal. And it and works was, out pretty good. And your performance was also uh, quite better, I must say, here in the last game. You didn't get knocked as much as in the yeah. first we saw. So, so what was your adaptation as well? I saw you were playing the, the soul shape, you were playing your self-grip as well, and the goblin. So everything, you, you pulled everything out of your spellbook. Yeah, I mean, the first time we played Eye of the Storm versus this team, every single time I got gripped, I DC'd. And then I just got knocked from there. It was incredibly sad. That's but really Rift is like the worst not. mechanic ever. Like, it is terrible. Terrible ability. Needs to go. Awful. Hmm? Uh, anything from yourself, Gallo, at all? Any questions? Uh, you have I was for, wondering, uh... how come you didn't swap... Uh, you swapped off the Asa Rogue on the Twin Peaks, I think it was. You, you went Asa and Warsong, then you swapped off Raz. Uh, we tried it and it didn't feel very good. Um, <laughs> because enough. I think uh, speedrun team, like big uh, shout out to them. They definitely play good. They know exactly what Azeroth does. They must have tested it in war games. As soon as I pressed my abilities, they pierced and everything, so didn't really do anything. Hmm? Uh, so I went so I think there's the CCP. Counter better. <laughs> yeah, more yeah our first flag map was just, I don't know, it was just awful. We had no idea yeah. what we were doing, and we made so many mistakes. It was, yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. But we brought but... it back on the Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks was just very unlucky, I feel like. We could have easily been 2-0 up on that map. But yeah, you know, yeah, we were victorious in the end. I think we yeah. just played the wrong uh, comp on Warzone. We played the comp to kill them, but... When they send so many people offense, we can't really kill them, and we can't kite either. It's, yeah. uh, it's I was, uh, was going to say the the Warzone Gulch uh, specifically for yourself, Killy, was uh, was was especially rough. There was a couple of occasions where it was uh, effectively almost two globals, and that was it. It was game over. Uh, um, yeah. I I want to point out though, one of the questions that we had: Eye of the Storm, game five in a grand final, and you bring out the Hunter. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was, was very true. Uh, <laughs> it's the worst competition we made all evening. Oh, on, I've, I've, been, I, I, okay, I've been convincing <laughs> my team for like two weeks now that Hunter, like the way we play, Hunter is better than uh, Boomkin because basically <laughs> the, the Guardian either has to instantly trinket ink on my trap or my rogue just bombs me late and it's also a base. But the way they played last game was a lot different to the other Eye of the Storms we played versus them and versus like other like crazy teams like Evidence. So I, did, I wasn't expecting them to be like five man out healing for their bases, but yeah. If, if I knew that, then obviously Pumpkin would be better. Also, uh, a question here for, for Mac here again. We saw your team playing double rogue. It's something we haven't seen this whole expansion, I think, maybe in the start. But is this something that you guys have been practicing? Is this some dark tech? Uh, is this something you maybe we're going to see on the normal ladder play now since you guys wow. uh, executed it to great success? I, I have always said that two ro <laughs> boomkins and rogues is the best class in RPGs by far. Like nothing else even comes close. Stealth is the most insane mechanic. And uh, I've been begging my team to start playing Double Rogue again since after we all went to play TPC, like most of us, they've been kind of shifting the meta a little bit towards more sync, like more team fight oriented comps. And ever since coming back, I've been begging my team to play some Double Rogue, and clearly it works. Clearly, it's one of the best comps in RPGs, and hopefully, people will start playing that more because it's more fun having two rogues and just having a massive team fight every single game. Uh, more stuff is happening around the map, and you can come back and. You can instead of just winning with a small victory of winning mid once, you you can five captain enemy team. That's way more fun. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank for the fun, yeah. And and a question for Raz here: If you were to give your team an MVP, and you can give it to yourself personally, I also have a few favorites from your team. But but who do you feel like stood out from your team? Who was maybe the calming voice when you were down two one as well? Who 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 would you like to give the MVP title to? Uh, what were when we were in Gilneas, were was it two one to them or two two or two one one zero? I can't remember. One, it was one, one zero one. to speed run. One zero okay, to speed well, run. Well, I kind of want to give it to Oxy honestly because he kept mine against like four people. Hmm? Uh, so yeah, that for me, was the I hero think, play for sure. I think Oxy winning the Gilneas is uh, like pretty much because we're getting slowed really hard there. So I think Oxy definitely MVP for me at least. I thought Killy right clicking on uh, either storm was pretty. Yeah, good. that was pretty good as well. Days. Yeah, that, that was, was pretty, pretty good I mean, too. There's some good players that I take a lot. It's so. really the Willex Fountain. If you didn't find him there, that would have been yeah. sketch. 
Oh, yeah. Willix did find him. I thought yeah, you knocked him away with the, the trap or something. Uh, no, and I he found him. Oh, wow, shit. Well. Otherwise, we would have flare bombed, but I think he can keep it long enough if we flare bomb. So, why, why were we not invited to the wedding, lad? Well, you, you're more than welcome to fly out to America if you wanted to come. Oh, I thanks, didn't think man. anyone would. Oh. <laughs> There we go. The offer is available. That was uh, again a great performance uh, from you folks here. We'll uh, we'll let you we'll let you head off and enjoy the rest of your evening um, or potentially morning, depending on where you are enjoying your victory status in the Method Mayhem. But before we go, uh, any final words from you folks? Obviously, here uh, based on you know the, the, the tournament that you've gone through and, and some of the teams that you've played against. Maybe one by one, we can start with Kili, then Meki, Res, and Sot. Sorry, say that. Sorry. Any okay. last words from you, Kili? Uh, fix your microphone, oh. mate. Um, I just want to thank Method again. Uh, it's like this tournament that we're doing right now. It like brings a lot of light to the high and medium end of RPGs, and it makes the, it makes the bracket like a lot of fun. And I'm hoping that people see how competitive it is and try to step in the bracket a bit more and just try to uh, increase the activity. That's my end goal. So yeah, thanks to uh, Method and all the players. And Meg? Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks to the Method. It's a really fun tournament to play. It's fun having something different and something to actually look forward to instead of just queuing the same old data every single day. I uh, also want to give a big shout out to, uh, to Crow. He's in the chat right now, the cool guy. And of course my team for coming back from TBC and actually trying and putting in some effort to getting a little bit better because we were very, very bad when we came back. And we have definitely improved a lot in the last like two weeks. So yeah. Wes? Uh, I want to show a method for sure for giving us this opportunity to work with them to make tournaments for our bracket. It uh, is definitely like massive that we even get the chance to. Um, like everyone appreciates truly like big thank you to Method and uh, Bookmark and Linden Kron specifically uh, from behind the scenes insane uh, people for sure and then a uh, little shout out to my guild see you Thursday Stormscale um, yeah and a random applause for Mackie as he says and uh, Sot the last guy of, uh, of E-Heroes we have here um, yeah, just a big shout out to Method for hosting the tournament it shedding some light on RBGs which is you know, the RPG just doesn't get like enough credit. You know, it's a good fun bracket. So getting more people to play that is obviously amazing. And yeah, shout out to my amazing new wife, Caitlin, who's watching in the chat. <laughs> yeah, oh. That's it. oh, congrats on that marriage. Hex, you have you. any final words? Maybe Bookmark have something or Linden want to drop in as well, the behind the scenes production, uh, who is also <laughs> joining us. Well, we will uh, before before we get to the uh, behind the scenes team because I'm sure Bookmark will have, Bookmark always has words. Bookmark is an incredible person, but uh, I want to thank obviously E Heroes once again and congratulations on taking the victory here in the Method Mayhem Battleground Showdown. Feel free to go ahead and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy the spoils of war, as they say. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. No worries. No worries. So there we have it, ladies, and gentlemen, and everybody in between. E Heroes, your Method Mayhem Battleground Showdown champions. Got to give them, you know, all the props in the world. They played an incredible series. They really, really did. And Speedrun, you know, Speedrun ran them hard, Gelu. That was not an easy series by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, I mean, it was an excellent series. It was very back and forth. Uh, it looks like Speedrun have been a team that have been around for a long time instead of a team that was just formed. Well, you said they had different players coming in for this tournament rather uh, compared to the last one as well, right, Eddie? So, mm -hmm. Yeah, some American players, yeah. Yeah, they, they looked like they've been established for a very long time. Yeah, not only that, but, you know, the fact that we, you know, the fact that we see some of these teams coming across, you know, we saw E-Heroes before, and I think it was hinted at there, obviously, in the interview, the fact that this is shedding a light on the RBG community, not only on the top end, but also, you know, players that are coming through, as you mentioned there, Eddie, uh, Speedrun, you know, not necessarily been together as long as some of these other teams, and uh, we we also mentioned it before, obviously, we got to the, uh, you know, to the end of the grand final. The fact that these tournaments are happening is is incredible, and it's what's keeping this game alive. 
Yeah, it is, it is. And uh, I hope everyone enjoyed it. I hope that this will just spark some ignition in, in not only the, the scene, but also the community as well. And, and, and it's important that we really all come together and not just RPG, also Arena. Arena is also a bracket that has maybe has not the best period here in, in the last year. So I really hope that, that we can all come together because in the end, community is, it, is what keeps people, uh, what can you say? It's what keeps people going and it's what keeps people here, right? You want to come back because you have a lot of friends that you want to play with. You don't just come to, to, to go slay some, some alliance. So, yeah. I hope yeah. you all enjoyed it. And uh, also, uh, thank you to you, Kexman. Amazing host as always. Uh, this is our second tournament. I'm sure, I hope that you and I will have more. Also, a big shout out to, to Gelo. I'm really happy that, that you chose to join us as well. It's not uh, always that we have some really experienced arena players commentating this. So I'm really excited about that. And hopefully we'll also see, see you in the future as well. Yeah, I'm a big fan of RBGs, always have been, except when majors fell out of favor, so. I don't get invited to the top groups anymore, but you know, <laughs> it was it was a uh, fun until maybe, that happened. Maybe in the future they will swing back around, but uh, for the time being, however, we do have one more guest, however, and I want to see every single person in chat. I want to see the love. I want to see the hearts. I want to see you sending all of the good vibes. We have Bookmark with us. Uh, Bookmark Method Mayhem. That's another one in the books. Uh, and what a way for this. Uh, what a way for this method mayhem to end with that fantastic grand final there between e heroes and speedrun. Yeah, I mean you've very you're flat, very flattering with your words, Kexman, I must say. And yeah, it's another it's another notch on the belt, another event in the BG space completed. You know, it's been a lot of work um, behind the scenes here as well. I just want to give a shout out to the people on my team, more specifically Lyndon Cron, um, and also Crystals as well, who is responsible with working with us and creating this incredible add-on that we're using um to give you guys the viewing experience that you're getting um huge shout out a lot of work has been done there but yeah i mean this event it kind of means a lot to me um you know i love rbgs i always have them as a player and i i'm i really agree with what people like eddie and what raz have been saying and other people that was just in here you know it's breathing life back into a bracket that all of us who played it for some period of time we've always got a soft spot for right so I'm really, really glad that it's doing such great things and I'm looking up to the future. Hey, US, you know, we might be coming over your way soon if you if you can front some teams, you know, uh, reach out and get them at the ends and maybe we can sort something. Alternatively, come over to EU. Let's let's all be in one place. Let's all game together in one side of the world. And then if you do yeah. lose, you can blame Ping. And also a huge shout out to GH. Yeah. GH. <laughs> GH. <laughs> and has to end it with the gh well thank you very much bookmark for your very kind words and, and once again you know this is what we all love to see and maybe you know maybe we change it up where instead of you know we go over to na and or na come over to eu alternatively and you know a double alternative open up the regions blizzard let us play with who we want to play with fingers crossed we we would love to see it but Unfortunately, that is all we have time for here this evening. Before we go, though, uh, I do want to thank some of our fantastic sponsors. I want to thank Twitch, obviously, for the opportunity to put this event on, for the support that they have been giving us. Um, obviously, for Dawn for supplying 10 million gold. Once again, that is exclamation point Dawn in the chat as lovely well. Woman, um, yeah. yeah, lovely, lovely, absolutely fantastic. And finally, to dbm as well they've you know the support they've given us with some of these add-ons are brilliant check out dbm for your pvp needs exclamation point dbm in chat if you want to find out a little bit more it gives you some fantastic timings in dungeons gives you spell alerts you may use it for your you may use it for your mythic plus you may use it for your raiding but also don't forget about how useful it can be in pvp but uh, it's time for us to say goodbye, Gallo and Eddie. And uh, why don't you tell the fine folks in chat uh, exactly where they can find you on the internet if they want to find out a little bit more. Gallo, we'll start with yourself. Uh, you can check out my Twitter. I think it's in the handle, just Cal Gallo, or my Twitch, which is uh, twitch.tv forward slash Gallo Baba TV. Cheers, there we nice. go. Nice and simple. And Eddie, where can the people find you if they want to get a little bit more of that Eddie fix? If you want more of Eddie LOL or just more of RBG in general, you can tune in to my streams. Uh, I will probably stream tomorrow Eddie LOL 1 on Twitch. And um, 
we're gonna probably do a lot of viewer games. I hope that a lot of these new viewers are, are ready for RPGs. So tune in tomorrow and, and let's play some games. Yeah, fantastic. Make sure you mandatory. check <laughs> make sure you check out Eddie and if you want a little bit more Kexman in your life, make sure you check me out on Twitter at Kexman. And you can also find me here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash KexmanWCR. Once again, all that information, if you just do exclamation point casters in the chat, can be found for your leisure. But with that, it is the end of the first Method Mayhem of 2022. Congratulations once again to eHeroes pulling out an incredible victory in a best of five grand final. I'm sure we'll be back further on down the line and make sure you keep an eye out because who knows, Method Mayhem could be back sooner than you think. Kevin Heroes.